What's up everyone? Welcome back to Rob's Gaming Table. Today on the table, we are continuing our playthrough through our solo campaign with the Age of Tyranny expansion for the awesome Dice Chuckin' RPG. Too many bones most of the time, not enough bones. And hello, welcome to the stream where everyone knows your name. Norm! Dragon! <laughs> hello everybody! Hello, hello, welcome. We're all joining us live here. <laughs> good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Uh, yeah, we're continuing today. Uh, warning, today is going to be a shorter one. As you guys who watched the end of the last one know, we got another one of those day three with two progress points, six progress points needed, nine days to complete it in. So it's like, <laughs> cheers. <laughs> oh, man. That's a show I want to go back and binge watch all the way through. I only watched like episodes here and there uh, when I was younger, but. A lot of it was over my head, obviously, uh, in those days, but I think I think more of it will make sense nowadays, but yeah. <laughs> Anyways, all right. Uh, thank you to our Patreon backers. You guys are awesome. Thanks for supporting us here. Thanks for helping us grow. If you're interested in donating, links are in the description below. Uh, one of our goals was unlocked to do a 24-hour live stream. Uh, that will be this Saturday, if you're watching this around when it got posted. Uh, June the 13th, starting at 8 a.m. Eastern, going till Sunday, 8 a.m. Eastern. Uh, the games are being being voted on. If you're a Patreon backer or want to become one, you have till Wednesday uh, before the stream. I don't remember what time, maybe like 5 p.m. or noon or something, uh, to vote before the polls close. And we find out what the top selected games are for the main games we're going to play on the stream. But there will be surprises where we have more casual, lighter games that we'll pick from a list. Uh, and uh, Justin might be joining us. We'll have like the first human uh, enter our home in a long time. Um... The closest we've had is like the, the postman comes kind of close to our porch, uh, and, you know, to drop boxes off, but that's about it. But Justin may be joining us for the stream for the majority of the Saturday. It might be there pretty early. Uh, our daughter will be joining us to play one game with us. We're doing the best we can with the whole COVID social distancing stuff, but it uh, should be fun. And uh, we're going to we're gonna pick some uh, lighter games, like I said, and then we'll just uh, pick from that list. We'll just work with the chat as we're playing. And whoever's here watching and wants to see this game or that game, we'll just play whichever guys one you guys want. There may be one or two we just kind of like override and pick ourselves, but it should be fun. Uh, so if you want to tune in for that, you can set a reminder already. You can see all of our upcoming live streams, youtube.com forward slash Rob's Gaming Table. And you can set reminders for all the upcoming streams you're interested in. Uh, or subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any. <laughs> well, the first human outside of our family. We had the neighbor's cat kind of come, come, try to come in our house yesterday. No, two days ago. Uh, so that that was like you know that's closer than most humans have got to our house, other than the three of us uh, living here. But uh, that's a that's a non-human. <laughs> so that doesn't count. <laughs> okay, well, let's do this. Let's get down to the table. Uh, let's get set up. Okay. So we are going to read the campaign card. All right, here we go. Campaign, the lurking Molnor. What is with the Molnors in this playthrough? They're everywhere. The battle is as good as over. All that remains is a bog lurk that looks quite out of place. It has the mark of the Molnor on its neck. Molnor don't typically end up involved in the syndicate if they're adept fight, uh, syndicate if they're adept fighters. So this makes sense, some sense. But what is it doing here? Does he think he will go unnoticed or be allowed to pillage the well-stocked tyrant corpse? After pleading for its life, the lurk asks for something unusual. It seems working for the Molnor hasn't been as lucrative as was originally thought. The Lurk asked to join us on our trip back to Obendar, and beyond promising a number of rare goods, if he's allowed to take a crack at looting some of the casualties of battle. So we know we got the Tyrant Die, which was Duster's Dagger from yesterday. Uh, Party Crasher, additional uh, recovery phase option, Molnor Trader. Party can exchange five defeated baddies from defeated baddie stack for one loot. Shuffle them back into the active baddie stacks. And the scar, we got one scar that uh, we decided yesterday to put it into Hidden Rut. So we've locked off the chance to use Hidden Rut. Whatever. Um, we carry for two training points and two loot slots. Uh, we only had these two Tyrant die taking up loot slots. 
and we took these two training points in attack, which we are no longer allowed to train in attack. So the most attack we're getting today is four, unless we fail and get a boon that lets us uh, recover that scar, get rid of that scar uh, kind of thing. Um, and we're going to draw a random timer right now, and we're going to start on day three with two progress points, which I already have us on day three on the dial. Uh, we're at two progress points already, and we need six progress points to fight the tyrant, and we have to do it within nine days, no matter who we get. This overrides it. So let's find out which tyrant uh, we are going to get left out of Gendrix, Goblin King, and Drellin. And we're going to throw them. <laughs> Pizza delivery guy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what's this? Uh... Cabra can I have groups of ten as of Friday midnight. Ah, yeah, I've been paying attention to exactly like what the rules are. I just know things have been lifted, and Justin was reaching out to us, letting us know. I was like, hey, I'm okay to come over. It seems like it's kind of allowed, I think. And I was like, yeah, okay, whatever. And that was a couple weeks ago, but then we didn't. And then now it's even later, and I know they open more stuff, so. Uh, so John says, by the way, I would suggest to break up the stream. Why would I break up the stream? We'll take breaks during the stream, obviously to fill our faces, so we're not smacking lips on camera. Um, and being annoying uh, and messy on the games. But that's kind of the only breakup. The stream should just be going the whole time, if... There are any playthroughs that I feel are like watchable later that were pretty good of certain games. I might cut those out. Uh, I'll download the stream, throw it in the editing software, and cut out those sections and kind of post them as their own videos later. But this is a more of a casual Patreon celebration, chill with the chat, you know, just relax, have fun kind of thing. So it might not be the best uh, display of those games, so I might not show them off as... Uh, separate videos promoting here's a playthrough of this game oh my god because if it's just us chatting with the chat the whole time then it might not be the best view later but we'll see we'll see you can always watch the stream and scrub through it later too all right here we go we're facing mr drellin pale face bum, bum, bum. all right Yeah, and I find with cutting up streams too, Sajat, uh, it creates confusion. If you have separate start times for all these different files, then people don't know where to start, don't know when to finish, streams stop, people leave them on in the background. If it just ends and then they come back, they're like, what is going on? Why is my stream done? And mm -mm. Nope. Stream software should not have a max time limit. Nope. It should not. There may be recording limits, uh, but you can even set it into the streaming software if I want to record it locally. You can have it break up into specific files based on size. So at, you can play 24 hours straight and you can have it so when it hits like so many gigs per file, it'll like chop it off as a separate file and then just keep on recording and, and you don't have to interfere with it. I've done that before, it's worked okay. Um, but I'll, I'll just live stream it to YouTube and YouTube will take care of that business. And then I can just download the ginormous file later and edit it up. Or I could record it locally. I might record it locally, we'll see just in case, and then I can cut out files quicker without waiting for them to download. We'll see, we'll see. I can timestamp start times. Ah, that's true, that is true. Yeah, go back through it, kind of scrub, find where like this game started, that game started, and put it like in the comments or description. That's a good idea, Sam, very good idea. We'll do, hey, yep, yep, yeah, I like that idea. BYOB, bring your own balls. <laughs> okay, uh, so we know it's Drellin. Let's get his card. We don't need his epilogue. Hopefully we read his epilogue today. I'll be honest. I'm a little worried. We're stuck at four attack. Four attack's okay, but I feel this is a very short playthrough. We don't have much else going on here. So that's not a lot to get built up. But let's check out Drellin's fight if it matters or not. And I don't really remember much about him and what he does, but we'll get that set up in a second. All right. Drellin Paleface. Ages ago, Drellin was banished from Obendar to the Poison Marshes for reasons no one can or is willing to recall. Instead of perishing, however, Drellin remains alive, face twisted and scarred from extended time in the swamps, but he has skin and bones, yet somehow he thrives in the bog. So interesting, he's normally a 6'10". He's normally a 6'10". So this 6'9", doesn't, it's okay. I just feel like we only got two training points and we're on day three. So like, I guess that's kind of normal. It's just weird, like, where they're 
kind of situated. I don't know. But we start on day three. Uh, hmm. At least it's not Kendricks. This is true. <laughs> I was I was a little worried about that yesterday when I saw the shorter playthrough and what we were carrying forward. I was a little worried this Kendricks, but we got Drellin, so <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> and Drellin, the fight against Drellin, we'll place him in lane one. We draw bog type baddies, place him in lanes two and three, kind of protecting him. Uh, they're one point baddies because we're playing with a party of one. Uh, we ignore adding any more to the queue. And then each move position in this battle requires two decks instead of one. I will forget that, and I will hope you guys remind me, because I, I always forget that, like, modified decks and extra fatigue uh, damage and stuff like that. It just feels weird. You do hundreds of battles without it, and you kind of, like, forget when you have to do it. Tyrant skills, Bog Ruler. If any Bog-type baddies are on the battle mat, Drellin cannot lose HP. So you can't even, like, side damage him or anything sketchy, like that's untargeting you know kind of damage this you just can't lose hp like it, it stops you no no true damage uh nothing like that so poison also has no effect on him don't even try it so that means like if i get duster's dagger dropping a bleed on him it doesn't apply until i take out the bog type baddies uh that must be done uh his tyrant die here he has poison enhancer it'll set any existing poison effect die to three on drellin's targets but if you don't have a poison on you you're okay which that other tyrant die i have that might clear off a poison could be helpful uh and then poison two uh he'll do with the other side of the die uh where he'll place a poison two effect die on you so in theory you could have other bog type baddies that are throwing poison on you then he comes walking up and turns it to a three or throws a two on you and then he turns it to a three. But we'll see how that works out. So it sometimes doesn't work out that well for him. And you're just like, he's rolling the one to set to three. And you have nothing on you. Uh, which is great. Uh, let's check out his stats here. Uh, eight health, three attack, two defense. So pretty beefy. Goes at five. He's melee only. Doesn't move diagonal. He does not move diagonal. So we can, we can play some kiting stuff. And he, um, yeah, doesn't have any kind of sketchy stuff where you have to be beside him to target him or anything like that. He just is rolling two defense and has eight health. But I mean, that is not the worst. We just got to wipe out who else is on the board and not get too destroyed by this guy in the process. Hmm. They're one point bogs. So hopefully it's not like two clay golems with break because that would suck. And how do we prevent that? Do we send them all to the back? Do we just send every bog type we find to the back? But then he pulls out bogs, doesn't he? He has a Tyrant card. We're actually going to use a Tyrant card from 40 Days of Daylor. Uh, so it'll switch things up. I, I don't remember what this one does. But it's not that crappy one that he comes with in the core set. Where you have to like sca uh, scavenge different baddie types. And if you don't have them, you lose a progress point. Like you don't gain one. And that one can be super rough. Especially on a short playthrough like this. Uh, that's tanked us before. Uh, but yeah. Uh, we don't have to deal with that. Alright, so... Uh, I'm going to get rid of the day one and twos since we do not need them. And we'll grab a random day three. Where's Gasket when you need him? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Gasket against uh, Drellin is, uh, I'm sure, really easy. <laughs> Can kite, but you'll get two to three poison every turn. Uh, maybe. We'll see. That's the other thing. If we're going to get hit with poison, we need to get our health up. Because that's true damage. No buff, no defense. That's not going to help us. All right, let's just grab this one. I'll throw these over here. So this is our day three. Uh, and then I shuffled these up, but we can do a little bit more here. I'll shuffle the loot in a sec. Uh, and we're at nine total days to get this done. So we're going to get six uh, encounters. I think that was six. Was it six? Talking and counting at the same time. Uh, and this goes in here. Uh, we'll use this on top. Throw these off to the side. Yep. Okay. Let's shuffle it up. And hello, Derek. A lot of those bog baddies poison at range, which sucks. True. It's just hopefully I roll high initiative. If I roll high initiative in that fight and I get to snipe one of those poison guys ahead of time. And if the other one's like a clay golem and he's trying to like run after me and he's like on the other side of the board, he won't even get to me. It's Gendrix I'm a little worried about, but hopefully I can start where he can't get to me yet for a turn either. And then I can snipe that other guy. It's just I'm worried if it's a clay golem. That's the only problem. I'll have to get the broadhead going. So bringing in the uh, extra mech leg to try to get some extra bones could be the broadhead I need to slap down uh, uh, poison uh, the clay golem with break. 
but if we can manipulate, if you know what we need to do, maybe uh, his die requires targeting. He can only target melee though. Yeah, uh, it, uh, the bad he can though. Yeah, uh, Drellin can only. Uh, yeah, he's only melee, and the clay golem's only melee. Yeah, yeah, this guy needs to be beside you to actually hit you and do anything. So kiting, like as long as we're away from him, he's just a melee dude and his die, he needs to be beside you to actually hit you with it because you would have to be his target. He can't target you from further away. Yeah, he's a melee, what's that called? Melee attack form versus range attack form. Okay, let's look away and see where the topper is. Okay, let's go. All right. Day three, so that there for now. Okay, we have our loot, we have our scar. Preventing a loot, we have like one free loot slot here. Uh, this we can put over here for now. Drellin, he needs six progress points, so he's just going up in Shale Fist. He'll just wait here for us. Uh, and I need his die, which I thought I got. So his die, the poison enhancer thing. Uh, yeah, poison two is on yeah, it looks like a three and three. So 50-50 chance on each result. Uh, okay, his baddie types are bog, uh, beast, and goblin. Bog, goblin, beast. These ones can go away. Keep off to the side. Okay. Uh, so, whoops, 20, 20, 20, okay, what does this get from, goblin, okay, uh, fives will shuffle over here, ones will shuffle over here, 20, 20, five, 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 ones. So, the clay golem, if he's going to be a problem in the fight, uh, scouting wise, if we see them, do we just take them ahead of the boss fight and defeat them? And any other bog types kind of send them to the back. That way there's some bogs in the active stacks that we can grab from because we'll have to search the active first. And if we can't find any, we go defeat it. So I think that's a strategy. But the stacks aren't that big, but it's a shorter play. So I have a feeling we won't really go through this whole stack, but. Hopefully the clay golems <laughs> are going to be near the, not right at the front, but like we see them so we can scout them out. So, whoops. All right. So let's just throw that in there like so. And the 20s. Hello, Paul from Gaming Rules. <laughs> Can't stop. No, understood. Understood. Life of a streamer. Very busy. I know. I know what it's all about. <laughs> but hello. <laughs> Like a few days and like reach it back. Yeah, I, I don't think so. But I mean, with scouting, remember we're scouting, so we can pull chips out uh, and get them get and and get through this pile faster. But we got to be careful that we don't go too fast. That uh, well, I guess we could throw to the back what we need. We just we just got to uh, do it carefully. So I just got to remember when I'm scouting, when I see a clay golem, and not just to throw him at the back because he could be the last one left uh, in the pile when we're searching for bogs for the boss fight. So we gotta be strategic about it. Or you go through the pile really fast and then we'll see, but I doubt that's gonna happen. In a multiplayer playthrough, yeah, we'd rip through this pile a couple times. And that's what happens when you're playing Drellin, the base set Drellin, uh, when you're trying to uh, scavenge all the different baddie types. You'll have them in your defeated piles and you'll be like, yes, and then you'll have to go for an next battle and you'll draw and they get shuffled back and then all of a sudden you draw that card and you don't have the baddies you need because you went through the piles too quick. That's a stupid little mini game during that playthrough. It makes it rough. Okay. Uh, so next. We got our baddies set up. Uh, days set up. Our health is at four. Points taken over. All right, let's do day three. Here we go. <laughs> Hopefully you get it quicker, Sacabra. Hopefully it comes faster. I hope. Uh, but we'll see. 
Don't worry, it'll be worth the wait. Uh, casualties of war. In times like these, sympathy is in short supply. The various deranged tyrants, well, tyrannical behavior, makes it easy to forget these are creatures who ebon, uh, who are ebon only by force or association. These innocent and dispatched cre uh, displaced creatures, sorry, often match up, wash up. I can't read. I gotta hold it closer here. <laughs> these innocent and displaced creatures often wash up on the shores of the Cibron, wounded and in need of help. Today... They offer their raft in hopes this journey ends with a slain tyrant. The raft could be used to cross easily, but it feels like we should return their generosity somehow. Options here. Both peaceful. Very nice. We could take the raft and wish the survivors well. Success. But, uh, but you, your well wishes do little to heal their mortal wounds. Oh, or offer uh, to escort the wounded to safety. Each gearlock must place a baddie. Take a batty chip from any active stack into their loot area. Treat the batty as loot. Wounded subject. Each gear lock must keep the batty in their loot area until party reaches five total progress points. And they're heavy! Oh, I hate this one. I knew this was it when I started reading it. So, do we want to get rid of one of the tyrant dies? That's the question. No, we can't. We gotta get rid of both. We gotta get rid of both because the scar. The scar actually takes up a loot slot. So, to carry this guy, he's three heavy. So he takes up three spots. I mean, he's heavy, so he takes up three spots, yes. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know if that's worth it for the trading points. I, I'm kind of having fun with these dice. Yeah, <laughs> I think number one. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's worth the training point to lose these hard-earned tyrant dice. But this is the kind of situations you get in, in the campaign, which I love. The hard choices you have to make. So we're not going to carry this baddie. Because we can't... We don't have another party member. This is the problem when you play solo. <laughs> you get stuck with stuff like this. And you don't, you can't just pass off uh, the loot to somebody else. Uh, so we're going with number one. Yes, <laughs> everyone's everyone's voting. Yeah, but the decisions can be made, right? If these tyrant dice weren't that great, but I th I think they've been doing pretty good. Uh, I mean, I know ty I know Duster's dagger's done good, uh, but in this playthrough, Marl's axe has not been bad. It's actually healed us when we needed it, and it's it's killed some baddies when we, I guess, not really needed it too much, but it, it's worked out most of the time. All right. Uh, so we get a progress point. We're going to three progress out of six needed. Uh, and then we're going to grab a loot. A mech pick. During your lock pick attempt, you may bypass a lock of four or less dice without using action dice. Okay. Uh, did I shuffle that stuff up? I probably didn't. I did before. Yes, I did before. Just not on stream. Let's just do this loot. Uh, and we'll just do this. But either way, getting a mech pick, yeah, no fun. But we could toss it away, look for better loot, I think. Uh, training point. Health? Health, I think health. Is health good? I like health. Uh, we're dex, but I think health. In this case with Drellin, throwing poison on us. We have bog types in here. We have goblins that are some range, some not. They have mischief, knocking dice away. So defense is not like the best, but it's still good. Uh, and then what else do we have? Uh, what was the other one? Uh, beast. Beast rolling high attack dice, flight, dive, lashback. Mm, yeah, health. Matt's, Matt's voting health. I'm down health. I feel that's the way to go here. Uh, five health. Feels super low, but here we go. And that's that. Boom. Got one down. Uh, recovery phase. Let's look for better loot. So we're going to toss away the mech pick, and we will roll six dice, looking for bones. Give me some bones. Uh, or we can do... Nope, we don't have enough defeated baddies yet to throw away for loot, uh, which is okay. Uh, we got one bone. That's all that matters. As long as you get one, it's a good day. <laughs> uh, let's throw this up here. Okay, so that's on the bottom. Let's see what we got. Rusty optics for some initiative meter shenanigans. I like. Okay, not bad. All right, let's go on to day four. Uh, let's see what we get. Defense is still good because even some of those guys in the bogs, uh, bog type baddies, they attack you still. But a lot of them aren't. They just poison. So it's like the poison's useless against them. But the the mischief guys, they knock out at dice in active slots. So they make defense dice kind of annoying because they'll knock stuff away before they hit you. So then again, defense, two types of baddies are making those pointless. But the beast type, it's great against. 
especially even Lashback, it, the, the defense dice can help a bit against. So it's like, I don't know, two out of three defense dice are not the most efficient thing, but it's still good. Like, don't get me wrong, like Drellin's still slapping you with an attack of three dice. You still want defense if you can. But our health, getting our health up there is kind of like a defensive measure, but also works against all those things. So, um, might be nice. Okay. Uh, we're invited for dinner. <laughs> this doesn't sound good. Wakey, wakey, little critter, a deep voice bellows. As a putrid stench fills my nose and mouth, I cough and spit to gain my breath, but the air is thick with the smell of rotten fruit, or worse. Something pokes my side and I start to swing. Swing? Why am I swinging? This question forces my eyes open. Everything is upside down and swinging uneasily. I look up and see nothing but green grass. Gaining my senses, I'm frighteningly aware that I'm abound and hanging. Legs lashed to a tree branch. Below me is a boiling pot. Beside it stands two troll mules, currently fighting over what to add to their stew. Gearlock stew. So I'm upside down, so I gotta read this upside down, right? Uh, so it looks like you pick your locks and escape. I'm just kidding. Uh, all right, uh, pick your locks and escape. Make a lock pick attempt is the first option. So it's just a 2F. Oh, I threw away that mech pick, didn't I? <laughs> right after I throw away the mech pick, this game throws this at me. Get out of here. <laughs> uh, you make a lock pick attempt. Uh, on a 3F, 2L, you escape with loot, just not your own. If successful, discard all your current loot. Oh, and draw two new loot. If you fail to pick both parts of the lock, remove two HP and take the other choice. We could try to trick the trolls. Uh, it tastes better after being unbound and rolled in fire ants. It gives Gearlock meat a real kick. Lose 3 HP from fire ant bites. You may only recover half your HP rounded up during recovery phase tonight. Encounter success, success is achieved no matter the outcome. <laughs> this is a rough day for. <laughs> Oh my god. What is this one from? This is from the base set. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, David. Hello, Philip. <laughs> Alright. Uh, trick the trolls, maybe? Just lose the 3 HP and then recover, what is it? Half half our HP rounded up. So we can get back up to 3 health. So we would lose 3 HP now, go down to 2. We could recover back up to 3 and then use this training point for a health, maybe? Yeah, I'm picking badly. <laughs> My bad. I, sh I shuffled badly. I, I shuffled badly. And yes. Must get first boon. Start to take damage, although first option would be more fun. Yeah, but first option, I lose all this loot. Like, I lose these two tyrant weapons. I mean, that's not the end of the world. Don't get me wrong, but... Man, I like Duster's Dagger so much. Could possibly go untargetable for a turn. Bleed the opponent. Oh, man. Yeah, I'm going to go with option two. I'm just going to lose three HP from fire ant bites. Go down to two health. All right, we succeeded. We we tricked the trolls. So we, we covered ourselves in fire ants, made ourselves too spicy. They spit us out or whatever. Uh, okay, so we get another progress. Uh, whoops, wrong way. Over here. So we're at four out of six. Uh, we get a training point. Uh, heat health. Yeah, health. Uh, health. Oh, you take the point first. You take the point first. So I would only go up to six as my max health, and I still only heal up to three. So that doesn't help us there. Uh, I'm feeling a dex. Yep, I'm going to take a dex. What are we going into? Day five, one point baddie. I could roll four attack dice on it, maybe kill it, probably not. It'll roll on me with three health and kill me right after, but it might not have a chance to get to me. Yeah, I'm going to go with Dex. I'm going to go with Dex. Uh, it says you may only recover half your HP rounded up during the recovery phase tonight. So I, I, I heal up to three. So I'm at five, half of that's 2.5, rounded up is three. So in recovery phase, I will heal. Yeah. But I'm saying if I took a training point there to go into my health, which would make me six health stat, divided by half rounded up is still three. So I can't cheat it by, you know, getting that extra health chip, which is like huge going from three health to four health. Huge, especially in these early battles. Uh, especially at five pointers we're about to run into. Okay, that's that. Done.
So we did recovery phase. We got one HP back. Yay. Uh, or there is a question. Uh, the risk here, I might not heal. Stay at two. Throw away rusty optics. Look for better loot and maybe get something that heals. Uh, no. So right here, you may only recover half your HP rounded up during the recovery phase tonight. So I, I, I don't know, like the way you read that, yeah, you could read it as like, you can only add half of it back. Yeah, that's tough. But I'm pretty sure you only get to heal up to half your health. Uh, what do you guys, second option, see him out of the car history. Yeah, I think it's only half. I think it's only half. I, I just go to the three. I'm pretty sure that's how that works. Because let's say I was even a higher level, I got that later, and I only lose three from that, there's no punishment then. Because, yeah, it's half my max HP. I should be sitting at three. Because it wouldn't make sense. It'd be too easy if you just lost your HP. Say I was at eight HP. I, I would lose three in this, and that punishment I took, the next time I, I would just get to heal four, which is more than enough. And then I go in the next fight with no, no punishment. And at lower, it works pretty much the same too. So because I chickened out and took the easy road out, I have a punishment going in the next battle. That's how I take that. All right. Um, we did recovery on to day five. Uh, day five. Risky payoff. This doesn't sound good either. The Ebon, evil as they are, still show a strange cross-species loyalty. Trolls won't hesitate to call for help from an orc, a kobold, or even a bog scum. A fight may look winnable, but it's often not worth the risk. Luckily for me, creatures of the Ebon almost always have a price. I wonder if the menacing figure ambling toward me can simply be bribed with something shiny in exchange for safe passage. Unfortunately, if he, is friend, if he has friends hiding in those bushes, they might be waiting to take a whole lot more than a shiny object. And that is base set seven. So we could. Here's our two options. Uh, combat or peaceful. Stand your ground and fight. Battle queues, batty points. At the end of rounds, three to five. Roll a d6. One to three. Add a one point batty at the bottom of the queue. Four to six. No baddies join. Uh, or maybe a peace offering is worth a shot. If you have a loot to offer, choose one and place it on the battle mat. Roll a d6. One to three. The loot's taken. But batty is not satisfied. Make another. Make an encounter choice again. Or four to six, loot is taken and batty leaves. No battle today. I feel like Hello John. Hello Heather. Hello, hello, welcome. So in this situation, I don't know what to pick here, but I think I'm just gonna go with option one and fight. Yeah, we are on day five, so it would be a five pointer. As long as we can take him out before the end of round three. Either he would take us out by then, or we would take him out, I'm sure. Uh, but I can't scout yet. I haven't scouted, so it's kind of annoying that I don't know. And yes, the encounter could be never-ending. <laughs> but it, once you kill the last baddie, though, Sacabra, it ends right there on the spot. So I, I wouldn't make it to the end of the round to roll a die. It just would get out of control. If I don't kill that guy, at the end of the round, we get another guy. But I think by then I would kill at least one. But yes, it could potentially keep going. If I'm not killing like two baddies in a turn, and I and I would have to be like splitting targets, stuff like that. It's the only way to really get it done. Or putting bleed on one guy and then taking out another. Yeah, just round three to five. So I have to be before that. I could get a loot out of it, maybe find something better. Or I can av avoid the combat. I could get rid of rusty optics to try to avoid the combat. Yeah, but the Rusty Optics can also help me g gain me an initiative spot if I need it and help me overtake this 5-point baddie, assuming he doesn't take me out with my 3 health right off the start. I think I try to avoid the battle. Part of me is thinking I throw away this loot. The only problem is this loot could be the loot that, that helps me win the battle. I wish I knew what baddie it was. If I knew the baddie, I would either run at it or try to avoid it. But if I throw a loot away, we roll a die. 
I have the chance that he just takes this loot and we don't have a battle. Then I get to recover to full HP at the end and I still get two training points. I don't get an extra loot, but that's fine. Or I just go right in the battle, save Rusty Optics because there's a chance I could lose it. So what do you guys think in the chat? What should I try? Should I try to throw away Rusty Optics or should I save it? I'm only at three health because of our last encounter. Three health out of five. Uh, so that, like a three pointer could just roll three attack dice, or a five pointer could roll three attack dice on me and kill me. Scabra's voting one. We just go right into the fight. So, it was, so is John. I'm, I'm thinking one's fine, but I, I think we might lose it. And this is two training points we're going to give up if that's the case. The thing is, I do get to scout two enemies. I do get to scout. So I get to look at two five pointers with my innate plus one. So I can hopefully like avoid that situation where there's somebody who can just like range attack me for three dice and, and wipe me out or even two dice that would probably do it yeah we just need a melee guy that we can start away from five point baddie could be one range could be one shot exactly exactly so we just got to grab a melee guy and hope for the best that it's not somebody that has like a ton of health with thick skin and rolls a bunch of defense dice we can't get through but we can kite we can kite if we need to uh, so let's try that. Okay, so let's sorry, let's go. Uh, we're going number one, as we're, as you guys have said, that's fine. Philip would pick option two. The only problem with the option two is if I lose this rusty optics and still have to fight, this rusty optics could be what what gets me to win it before taking any damage, because I don't have a lot of decks to kite too well. With an eight, fine melee. Yep, I'll just go with option one. Option one, here we go. All right, we got a melee. Only rolling two attack dice. I like it. Does have poison, but as long as we don't get close to this guy, we're fine. I'll keep him up front. And I'll look at the next five pointer while we're here, I guess. Oh, Matt said two. Oh, sorry, Matt. I didn't see the two at the start there. Uh, yeah, if you don't, you probably get KO'd. I know. I don't want to risk. I know the fifty-fifty, but this, this, I, I, I mean, I can mess with this either way. But so let's scout the second one with our eight plus one. Uh, and we'll go, yeah. Uh, I feel like we just keep this guy up front. Because he only goes at four. I have a chance to go before him. Yeah, I'll keep him up front too. He does signal, but if I get to go before him, I could take him out. The optic doesn't work on round one. That's why I'm hesitant of fighting. Uh, it does work on round one. Like, as long as I survive that first hit, I can use it on my turn. Then I jump ahead of the guy. And then I get a, two turns in a row before they get their second turn. And that's the hope. The hope is they miss. I rust the optics. And then I get two shots in so I don't have to worry again. Uh, but yeah, those are pretty good baddie pulls. <laughs> okay. Uh, so we're going with the fight. And we are grabbing... Uh, I don't have a woven snare yet. Or at all. I don't know if we'll have it in this playthrough, actually. Oh, but actually that would be good against Drellin, maybe. Mm. Okay. So six health. Uh, this guy here, Bog Deserter, has secrete two, poison one, two attack dice. He's only going at three. I don't think I can go lower than that. I think we're good on that. So, yeah, so four. I, yeah, I think he only goes three is the lowest. I keep forgetting, but yes, three is his lowest. So that's beautiful. Uh, that's beautiful. Okay. Uh, so I'll go over here in my usual corner. Three health. <laughs> And let's get her done. No other special rules, right? Just at the end of rounds three to five. Uh, so we got our end of round three. If we haven't beat this guy yet, uh, we're going to be rolling dice at possibly adding one point baddies. Okay. Can't roll any of these yet. I'm not adjacent. I'm not going to waste that dex. I'm not beside him so I won't get secrete splashing poison back on me. Unless the dice hate me. Yeah, that's the other option. <laughs> All right, here we go. Range attack on this guy. Four dice. I have four decks. Four attack. Let's do it. Uh, boom. We get six is the result. <laughs> Blow up the frog. Oops, right here. Boom. Shalaka laka. And we were worried. <laughs> hey, Angelo. 
because I've had situations, you know, where you roll there and you're like, bone, bone, one bone. Uh, awkward. <laughs> but at least that would get us closer to Broadhead, but still. And I had these dice too, so we'll see. Dragon Tower Strikes again. Okay. Uh, that was that. Sweet. Uh, reward phase. Where am I looking? Here. So we get another progress point. We need one more. And the rat, the six, we can fight him. Uh, two training points. Two training points. I want a health. I could be convinced for a dex. I, I would like a woven snare. I could go for multi arrow. I think woven snare or Wolverine. Wolverine actually in this playthrough, uh, I would like so he could take some poison instead of me. I'd be okay with that. Oh, and another loot. Do I get another loot? Yes, yes, I get another loot. Let's look at the loot first. That might change what we decide on here. Uh, stone hammer, single use. Add four to an action die result during your lockpick attempt. Yeah, no thanks. HP and Yeti. Yeah, John's been asking for Wolverine uh, since the last couple of playthroughs. Wolverine and a Dex. I don't know, I just feel low on HP. And if I miss that Wolverine ro ro roll. Yeah, he came once Yeti too. <laughs> okay, Yeti it is. Uh, but then... Dex? Yeah, we would need the Dex for the Yeti. Okay, we'll go there. We'll go there. Dex and Yeti. Uh, where is this guy? Yeah, Little Yeti, a.k.a. the Wolverine. Little Yeti, our companion here. <laughs> okay, throw him on the mat. It's more of a fun pull. I think it's... we got to be careful in this playthrough because it's short. But I think it'd be kind of fun. Like, he would distract some of those baddies. He'd help us out, assuming we roll a good option. But he is an expensive dex pull. And we still have these two dice also. Oh, those are expensive too. But once the, once he's out on the board and then dies, we have these to roll maybe. Yeah, I think that might not be the best, but. <laughs> if the ghillie pulls a brush from the loot to get some of those exploded frog bits out of his skill. <laughs> Next is defense, yeah? I don't know. I could go for no defense in this play, but that does reduce our chances of hitting backup plan options. Uh, so I would like it for that purpose. But I feel in the last few playthroughs, like, I haven't been barely rolling that one defense that you roll. It just feels like it doesn't hit that often. And, like, one defense, yeah, it could keep you in it. But I feel like the health is where it's at. But that's just my opinion so far in this, this little campaign. All right, that's done. Recovery. Hmm, I think I'll get some health. Go up to five. Okay. Done. Uh, now, on to day six. Snare and HP next. Yes, I could see that. I could see that. Yeah, it does look like a bear. I don't know. It's a Wolverine, though, supposedly. But again, I, I don't really know Wolverines that well. Is that what a Wolverine looks like? All right, we got all oh, the old stomping grounds. Finally, a landmark I recognized. Before the tyrants invaded, this uh, invaded and things got bad, groups of us would hang out on these shores. The pond had a peaceful, calming quality that was worth a couple of days' travel to reach. I know this area better than maybe anyone or anything, but now it's become a home base for trolls with fresh water and plenty of fish. It's the perfect base of operations for them. The clean spring water is also just right for brewing their fermented drink of choice. Guess we're about to see who knows this place better. Is this the, the brewmaster guy? Yup. Troll brewmaster. Okay, let's see here. Here's our options. Reclaim your childhood. Battle cube body points, including troll brewmaster five points. That would be two. Uh, oh, no, including. So we get the troll brewmaster, and it's day six. So we get another one pointer. We don't know. Uh, on your turn, you may spend one dex to move any one, any die, one spot, including baddies. No time to get sentimental. Draw them out to the road. Battle cube baddie points. Get the troll brewmaster in there. Only one baddie may be on the battle mat at a time. I feel like taking option two just to be safe. I feel like option two just to be safe. I feel a little low on health, but I think we'd be okay. The troll brewmaster, though, he is a five pointer. Let's find uh, troll brewmaster. No, he'd be in the other pile. Let's not look through there. There he is. Troll Brewmaster. 
Recovery one, thick skin, five health, three attack. Not the worst. But the thick skin kind of makes him like a three health shot. He's a six. If we roll a six again, that'd be amazing. We take him out. I don't need the loot. Yeah, option two, you guys are saying? Okay, I'm down. Option two. Okay, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. All right, so option two. Uh, we get the troll brewmaster uh, and one one point baddie. But we can scout first. Uh, I'll scout the ones. Uh, we get our clay golem with break. Hmm. We're on day six. We need to fight the tyrant by day nine. I could probably throw this guy to the back and we're not going to see him as our bog type baddie we grab. This is what I'm thinking. But he also would come out at the end of the battle and I could just use attack dice on him, the tyrant dice on him, maybe get bleed on him, kite him, not worry about him for fatigue. Yeah, maybe we'll get him in the defeated stack. Let's go in the defeated stack. And we'll check this guy. Range, three health. Uh, mischief one, careless. Mm, let's throw him to the back. Let's throw him to the back. Okay. Uh, boom. So that's our our cue is these two guys. Our cue is these two guys. Okay. All right. Only one baddie on the battle mat at a time. We get the brewmaster here, three on his initiative. Okay. Uh, we're going at four. We go before him. Perfect. Start here. Uh, and that is that. All right, let's do it. Uh, Gilly, five decks. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Yep, let's just go for attack and the Yeti. Uh, I'll target this guy. Uh, we hit for three, but thick skin stops one of that. He loses two. We'll take a bone. We won't spend the Yeti. Okay, he'll go. Recover one. And I'll move one, two. Okay. Uh, round two. We'll go. Uh, we'll roll. Three, mm. just. Yeah, I got to move one, two. And then we'll roll two attack dice and the Wolverine. Uh, we get the Wolverine side with three health, one maintenance, and one attack. Dagger. Uh, I don't want to do the dagger on him, really. I have to get beside him to do that. He rolls three attack dice, and he has recovery one. So the poison side, or the bleed side of it, just kind of counteracts by his recovery. Uh, I could become untargetable, but again, it's 50-50 shot. I don't want to sit in harm's way where I might miss on the untargetable. And then if I'm not beside him, I, I waste the other side of it. Even if I am beside him, I waste the other side of it. I could keep it to roll an extra attack die in my slot too. But I think I'm going to save the dagger for the uh, guy with break. That's the plan. Okay, so I will put this guy here. Our buddy. And he'll go before me next. He's got a hardy. Uh, and I hit for nothing because he has thick skin. One attack won't go through. Another bone. Okay. I'm also trying to stay up to Broadhead. Maybe we can just take out the guy with the, the golem with that. So this guy will move here. Uh, he'll roll three attack dice on my hardy little Yeti. Yeah, I was worried I wouldn't roll the Yeti, but now we're okay. Uh, oh yeah, he does go after the weaker right now. Uh, so this guy is just hitting the Yeti for one because he's hardy. Down to two. Uh, round three. Uh, the Yeti will just hit this guy for nothing because he's got thick skin. So again, kind of useless. Mm, and he doesn't roll defense. That doesn't matter. He's just a distraction. Okay, on my turn, I will spend a dex to keep the Yeti on the board. Uh, so I have four. And I'm going to... I'll just roll four attack dice on him. Uh, I hit for three. Thick skin, two gets through. Oh, I forgot to recover, didn't I? 
Yeah, the troll needs to recover. So he's at three, two gets through, uh, and I get another bone. Okay, thank you. Uh, round four, this is not great. Uh, this guy does nothing. Gilly. Just gonna roll. So where's this troll coming in when he does? He comes in here. That's fine. So yeah, I'll just roll four attack dice. Or he does have the three HP or fewer. Yeah, I will move up one, two. Okay, I'm gonna roll this tyrant die. Uh, I'll spend a dex to keep the other guy on the board. So I just roll the Tyrant die and one attack die. And boom, we got it. Uh, target five point or less baddie has three HP or fewer. We defeat it. So boom, he's gone. Tyrant die, exhausted. Uh, this die, nothing. Uh, this guy will come back in. He'll go... Uh, this guy was removed from the gate. Skip troll in round three. Did I? Oh, maybe I did. Yeah, he should have attacked this guy. If I did. If I did, sorry. Yeah, I got thrown off when the recovery thing. Hello, Bernardo. Greeting from my home office, trying to home and office at the same time. Spoiler, it's not working. <laughs> okay, so this guy comes in. So yeah, the, the guy would have just attacked this hardy guy. He'd go down to one. That's fine. Uh, okay. Uh, this guy will come in, lane two. Bottom of the queue. Uh, round five. Yeti will poke this guy for one. I will go. Um, I'll just move one. Spin a dex to keep this guy. So I have three left. Uh, oh no, I want to stay there. I think. Do I want to just bleed this guy? No. Nah, that's okay. Uh, so keeping the Yeti, moving one, we'll, we'll throw three dice against this clay golem. Uh, sure, we'll hit him for three. We'll exhaust those three attack dice due to break. Okay, so we roll. We can only roll one attack die. This is fine. Uh, clay golem, we'll attack this guy. Uh, roll one die. Oh, he misses. Okay, so little Yeti stays around. And fatigues. Uh, we'll take out little Yeti. He'll hit me for one. And hit the clay golem, and he is gone. Uh, oh, fortune discovery. Fortune discovery, I forgot to do that. Forgot to do that. Uh, camo? Ammo. No mech leg. Mm. Mm. Going into seven. Camo or mech leg? Uh, I want the boss fight to have the mech leg for, but I think we go camo. Uh, plus or minus two. Okay, this guy's gone. Uh, he goes here. Uh, we go home. Four health. That's done. Uh, progress point. We're able to fight the boss now if we want. And we just get one training point. Uh, I guess health. That overrides Woven Snare in my mind. So we go up to six. That's done. And recovery phase. We could heal one. Yeah, I think we heal one. Up to six. Okay. Uh, day seven. So we're on day one, two, three, four, five, six. No, we're on day three. Three, four, five, six. We started with two progress, so we should be at six. Yes. Going on to day seven. Okay, day seven. We're going to do another encounter. Uh, an issue of lung capacity. 34, 35, 36. How long before I drown in this bog? My ill-advised taunting landed me here, cornered in this soggy cesspool with no one to blame but myself. Thankfully, I remembered that most Eben have an unnatural aversion to water. 
if you can even call this water. Yet they, are sit, they sit at the water's edge with all manner of sharp and pointy objects. 42, 43, 44. The opposite bank is too far to swim, and I abandon my gear behind a boulder on this side. Maybe I can reach out and grab one of their spears. 66, 67, 68. Grab it! Battle cube baddie points reduce by 2 the attack of the first baddie to enter lane 1. Use the weaken 2 effect die to show this. Increase your attack by 1 for this battle. No skill dice can be used in the first two rounds. Uh, yeah, I could go with that. <laughs> what skill dice? Uh, I guess just my pet. Or go for the gear. Battle cube baddie points. No skill dice can be used for the first round. Well, uh, the, I think I go option one, right? Because uh, reduce by two the attack of the first baddie to enter lane one. It'll be a five pointer. It'll be this guy rolling three attack. So I can make him one attack. It's like I have an awesome woven snare. And then I increase my attack by one for the whole battle, which is fine. It's five. I can roll five attack dice to start. Yeah, you guys are all saying one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're going one. Uh, okay, and it, there's no advantage either way. Like they give you no no bonus on either option here. So we just want to get those two training points uh, for sure. Okay, uh, battle cube baddie points. Let's scout. Uh, we know. Let's scout the ones. Whoops. That's the second. Uh, Griffin Yearling. So we're get, we're at seven points. So we're gonna get a five. And these two guys. Uh, I'm gonna say. Mm, this guy's only two health. He won't get to me. He'll just be untargetable if he does attack. Hmm. I'll keep him. I'll keep. Ah, he goes at five though. He does go first. I'll throw him to the back. Let's find that other clay golem and get him off the board. Or get him out of the options. Uh, Lashback, Direwolf Pup. We'll keep this guy. Okay, easy. All right, let's do RQ. So we get this guy. Going in lane one. Five health. Melee, Goblin Sapper. Uh, and we'll put a weekend two on him. Show he only has one attack. He's going to signal though. That's the annoying part with this guy. Uh, then... Direwolf Pup going in lane two, melee. And then we get Bog Ribbits, secrete one, poison one, uh, going in the range position of lane three. And this one goes at three. And this guy goes at three after him. And we just need to roll a four or more. We rolled a three. Womp womp. That's okay though. That's okay. To go after this guy is not the worst, but we can't take him out before he signals. That's the only problem. Uh, I'm going to get all my dice back. <coughs> Excuse me. Hello, Logan. Hello, hello. Where did you sneak in? <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see here. Uh, we'll start over here. Optics? Yeah, I would use optics at the end of the turn, I think. I think it makes sense. Might as well. Like, that's when you use it, right? When you drop down. I, I know it's not as urgent in this situation, but what like, what am I saving it for? Eventually, I want to use it up. I'll probably see better loot at some point. Uh, okay. So this guy will go. He'll signal a one-point baddie to the cube. Uh, he will then go one and two. He'll move here. Uh, he doesn't roll any defense or anything. Then it's my turn. Oh, I forgot I have this. I could have messed with this cue to not have these two guys on the board. Why did I not do that? <laughs> ah, I forgot him on my camo. <laughs> I would have done it in this situation probably, but I'll save it for the next one. Uh... Yeah, I think we'll do one more fight before Drellin. Yeah, I think we'll do one more fight and just try Drellin with one chance, I think. I don't feel ready for Drellin. I would like Woven Snare for Drellin. Multi Arrow would also be not bad, but I think I need more decks, maybe a defense, maybe a health. Yeah, that's a little rough. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, let's just try to win this one, though. So in this situation, I feel like I want to fire on this guy. So that I'm not getting poisoned. 
But again, I don't have defense, so this guy rolling attack dice could could potentially hit for more. But I kind of want this guy to come down and, and block this other guy. But I mean, lashback's also a thing. Hmm, we have another another battler coming in here in lane four at some point. I think I'll just go for the range guy. I just don't want to get trapped though. I'm debating moving so I don't get trapped, but I also want to take guys out. All right, uh, we're going to roll a Yeti. We are going to roll four attack. Oh, am I allowed to use skills? No, right? No skill dice can be used for the first two rounds. Okay, so I have an extra attack though. So I can roll a five attack. Range guy first. It'll be lane three if you kill the range. Ah, yes, that's another way to do it. Yeah, so then I don't get him appearing over here. Good call. Uh, yep, okay, five attack dice on this guy. Uh, and we hit him for seven. I think that's enough. <laughs> I wish I could split that. Uh, all right. Boom. So we're not getting those guys in the fight with the bogs. Okay. So now purple guy, we'll have him step in front here. He'll roll an attack. Hits for one. I'm down to five health. End of the round. Oh, whoops. <laughs> oh, we get a cute little owl bear cub with his little blind striking spurs. So cute. All right. <laughs> Go to the melee position, bottom of the queue. He's paced now. Oh, the optics, yes. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, so that would jump us up three spots. Uh, let's go this way, actually. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, yes. Okay. Round two. Uh, Yeah, I think I just take out the pup. I think I just try to smash the pup for five dice. I mean, he's no different. Like, I need to take him out without a lash back. Uh, yeah, I might need some coffee. You're right. It is here. I only had one way earlier this morning. But, uh, yeah, I need to drink this one. I'm not on it today. That is for sure. I'm not on it. I'm stressed out by this shorter playthrough, like this less chance to work with like training point stuff has me really worried and I'm like focusing on like the wrong things and forgetting like the little things. Um, and I feel these encounters have not been very friendly. Uh, Matt's only had one pot. <laughs> uh, okay, let's just take out the pup. Yeah, let will just take it, or try. Uh, we hit him for four, which is perfect. That's enough to kill him without any lashback because he died on the turn on the hit. So no lashback. That's what we wanted. Uh, we do get a single bone. Let's throw that over there. Uh, this guy will go move up on us for one. Roll one attack die. He hits us for one. We go down to four health. Uh, this blind strike inspire guy. One, two. Okay, nothing going on there. Round three. Our turn. Uh, we will just roll five attack dice on the guy in front of us. Hmm. Not allowed to use skill dice yet, right? Uh, oh, I can now. It's round three. Let's have some fun. Uh, let's roll this one. Because if we do enough damage to this guy, we can wipe him right off the board. Or we heal. I mean, that's good too. I don't care about Wolverine yet. Or right now. Yeah, we'll just roll four attack dice and uh, the Moro's axe on the guy in front of us. So we got another bone. We hit for three, uh, which is perfect. We got the, the skull cracking whatever axe body flay. Uh, so we could hit for three first, apply the three attack dice. He's down to two health, and then we just apply this die and take him out. 
Boom. Five pointer down. Uh, these are gone. Hopefully we can get to extra mech leg. That's what I want to do here. Uh, so we might we might delay. I used optics one turn too soon. Think about it. That is true. I did. I did. I know. I know. But we talked about using it, and uh, I didn't, so it's okay. But I, I kind of don't want to hold this for the Tyrant fight, I don't think, either. Maybe, though, if we see junk. That's true. But I think we only have two more days, like, so we're only doing two more encounters total. including or One more encounter, one more boss fight, which is an encounter, I guess. Okay, uh, so our turn, round four. Oh, this guy, I forgot to move up, didn't I? One, two. So he doesn't do anything. Okay. Uh, now we're going to roll a bunch of dice looking for bones. Oh, I know who can help us get bones. This one right here. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Oh, look, look who got us the bone we needed. Look who got us the bone we needed. Our Wolverine buddy. Of course he did. Uh, so I'll pop that fortune discovery. We'll get extra mech leg. Yeah. And that's gone. And we'll hit this guy for four. He's gone. That is blocked. Okay, let's go here. Uh, reset this. And let's look at a loot. Oh, buddy. Ones rolled on your defense dice may be upgraded to two defense. Bones rolled on your defense dice may be converted to one defense, and it's heavy. Again, though, I'm not rolling defense like crazy, so I could change my strategy, but I don't think so. This doesn't help me really right now. I would have to throw away all three of this loot. And I, I could argue, in a lot of situations with a lot of gear locks, this armor is better than all three of these right here and these two Tyrant dice, but... Mm, not helpful now, exactly. John is 100% correct. Ah, it hurts to see this. <laughs> and not jump on it. Oh, that hurts. That hurts. Okay. Uh, yep. Progress, we don't need it. Two training points. I say a woven snare. And a woven snare. And a dex or a health. Probably health. Because poison three hitting us if we can't get rid of it. That's six health loss just from a poison three being on us. Not to mention other poisons being thrown on us from bog types. Woven Snare could nerf the boss. Buy us some time. Hmm. HP and Snare. It's Cobra, I like where you're going. That's what I think too. Anyone else suggestions? What do you guys think? I'm thinking HP, Snare, or Dex and HP even if we don't trust the Snare. Snare and HP, yeah. Okay. HP for sure. Let's do it. Going up to seven total health. And the snare. Hopefully the snare does good for us here. Okay. We're going to do one more encounter. Uh, and hopefully it works out. We get some more training points. And we can buff up a little more. Uh, recovery. I will heal. Up to seven. I have. I know this. This. This is what's stressing me out right from the beginning. As soon as we drew the card yesterday, I saw it was a shorter playthrough. I was. I was kind of worried about all three of these guys hitting them with a shorter playthrough, and and what we were carrying forward. We have very little to work with. That's why it's kind of like the the Wolverine is a little like risky, because he misses quite often, and when you get him on the board, he's costing you decks. So we'll see. Camo. We're using camo now for sure in the next fight because I want to make it as easy as possible. Assuming it's a fight, it might not be. It might be some peaceful. Stupid fluff that uh, hopefully doesn't hurt us going into another combat. Uh, Bernardo, we're doing all right. We're doing all right. Uh, it's 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 not bad here uh, in Toronto, which is not far from us. There were some protests recently, um, but it's okay where we are. We're like kind of rural, so 
So it's not too bad. There are protests happening in our city too, like uh, our neighboring city, but uh, they're very peaceful. It's all it's all good here. Corona is not too bad, aka COVID nineteen, but yeah, everything's okay for us. How about you, Bernardo? Same with David in Connecticut. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. Some places it's like fine, it's calm, but like the major cities. And like university towns where there's a lot of younger people, uh, it's like kind of gets out of control. Um, but yeah. Or with crazy racist police forces. That's also a problem too. Uh, <laughs> or some bad seeds in those police forces, I guess, would be. You can't say all of them are bad, but. Uh, okay. Uh, so let's go on to, we did recovery. We're going to day eight. And let's see, hopefully we get a nice encounter here. Please be nice, please be nice. The break is a lie. The cake is a lie. This abandoned por uh, prison cell has my head spinning, written over and over on every inch of the wall, the same message. It begins neatly at the top, slowly becoming messier, as if the prisoner was slowly losing their wits. The break is a lie. Over and over. Could it possibly be true? It's always being represented as a place of death and decay not worth exploring. But is this, just a, is this just a tale to keep people away? The adrenaline and anger in my veins has me more ready to fight for a fight than I've ever been. It's as if everything is in slow motion and the approaching onslaught of enemies has no idea what it's in for. So combat or combat. First option, unleash maximum pain. Battle cue baddie points at a five point baddie at the end of round, rounds one, three, and five. You have unlimited decks for this battle. Weaken has no effect. Rage. Battle cube batty points. Add a five point batty at the end of rounds. One, three, and five. Same thing. You may roll five additional attack dice. Does not cost decks during one of your turns this battle. Both choices encounter successes achieved if you remain on the battle mat after round six. Holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> all right battle cube body points it is eight but we use camo we can reduce it boom we're gonna reduce it it is down to six so we would be dealing with a five and a one and at the end of round one we add another five. Oh my god Suburbs news, things have been hairy, but working in IT is a blessing as we can stay mostly home. Just doing things much. Oh, <laughs> congratulations on your puppy. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Option one, you guys are voting for here. Oh man, okay. You have unlimited decks for the battle, so that can help me run around the board, right? That's the idea. Oh, running around the board, I think that's better than having. Five additional attack dice that I can't roll. Oh, I may roll five additional attack dice. Does not cost dex. Now, here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. The five additional attack dice, I, if I get backup plan stuff, I, I could split. I could split those attack dice and take out two guys before the, the round one even ends. It's, an, it's a possibility. This is what I'm seeing right now. Battle cube body points out of five point body, then rounds of one, three, and five. So... If we put a five and a one on the board because I use camo, that's only six points. And I roll, I would roll ten. No, what would I roll? Nine attack dice. Nine attack dice. We would assume some might be bones. But if none are bones, then it kind of sucks. I could roll extra mech leg in there. Uh, what are you guys saying? Oh, John's saying option two and end the fight. Need the split. Yeah, see? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. I wish you the very best, Bernardo. Okay, oh, that's good. Okay, awesome. Um, hmm, hmm. Yeah, I don't want this battle to go long. Like I would, I would probably use up the extra mech leg. And not have it for the tyrant fight. That's a little scary. Yeah, I would roll the mech leg if that's the strategy I was going for to help get that bone. It would give me at least one. And hopefully more. And if I hit, if I hit on the dice, so let's say we need six damage to take out one of them, and probably three to take out another. 
So with that nine attack dice, yeah, I could do nine attack dice and, and the mech leg. I would hope to hit for nine damage minimum, but it might not happen. Oh, Bernardo, thank you so much. Bernardo's now a Patreon. Bernardo, don't forget to join, uh, if you haven't already, your, your Discord to your Patreon. Uh, so you can jump in our Discord with us. Awesome. Thank you, Bernardo. <laughs> awesome. Might not need it. Yeah, I might not need the mech leg, so I can choose not to use it, right? It has to go to six, regardless of baddies on the board, right? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think it's only saying encounter success is achieved if you remain on the battle mat after round six rounds. Is it saying it only is achieved that way? Or is this in addition to normal combat rules? <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Oh, wow. Uh, what's this called? The break is a lie. I'm going to look it up. Let's see if there's something about it. I don't see anything when searching. Let me try chip theories. Chip theories FAQ. No. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah, you play it so you have to survive till the end. Counter success is achieved if you remain on the battle mat after, after six rounds. So I either play, if we play it that way, that's fine. Uh, the unlimited decks, though, that means I'm just running around a lot and hoping to kill these guys. But I think I'd still take the second option so I'm more offensive, so I can just squish these guys as they come in. Oh, man. Hmm. All right. We'll go option two. Let's do it. No, the five attack dice. Uh, oh, it says only during one of your turns this battle. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah, you're right. You're, that's right. During one of your turns. I'm very confused now. Hmm. Yeah, the front. Uh, this abandoned prison cell has my head spinning, written over and over again. All that stuff about the break is a lie. The adrenaline and anger in my veins has me more ready for a fight than I've ever been. It's as if everything is in slow motion and the approaching onslaught of enemies has no idea what it's in for. Reads like you have to be there for that long. Can't squish them. One has to live until round seven. Yeah. I can take baddies out, but I think ooh, the battle will go six rounds. So let's do it that way. Six round battle. Uh, I want to take the unlimited decks, I think. And that way I can run around and I can roll anything and everything whenever I want. But I don't have much to roll really over my five decks. But it would help me move. And we only start with a 
five. What did I do? Reduce down to six. So we're starting with a five and a one on the battle mat. I'll I'll scout. Yeah. But then if I don't take that five pointer out quickly, we get another five pointer coming in at the end of round one. Then I'll hopefully take out both those enemies before the end of round three, where another five pointer comes in. I have two rounds to take him out. I feel like I go with the unlimited dex option. Yeah, I'll leave the one pointer unless there's a chance to just take the one pointer out. Unless he's a range guy being annoying and hitting me. But I can scout the ones. So I, I want to take option one. So I get unlimited decks for the whole battle. Rather than five extra attack dice in one shot. Which is great to take out like one five pointer. But it doesn't help me for the other three that are going to come in. And then I'm kind of stuck. Like I'd be wasting decks and running around. And not have the decks to roll the dice to even take these guys out. And they would pile up. So I'm going to go with the first option. And we're going to have uh, Scout for two, because my neat. Mm -hmm. I'll look at the ones, actually. Well, I'll look at the first one. Yeah, see a little one-pointer with defense. This guy's annoying. I don't want him in the fight. Let's look at the next one. Oh, another annoying range guy. I'll put him to the back. Oh, so annoying. All right. So we don't know what we're fighting, but that's okay. Five and a one. Okay. Uh, so let's throw a woven snare. I should have probably looked for a woven snare target, but that's okay. Uh, yeah, we'll put it there. Here we go. What do we get? Oh, nice. It is a melee, and it's uh, Mr. Owlbear himself. <laughs> Fun times. So he's got Inspire 1, he's got Terrify. Uh, we'll put roll that in a sec. He's going at 4, hopefully I can beat that. Oh, and then we have this Cunning guy. Another, no oh, even worse, this guy's ranged with 2 attack dice. Ah! <laughs> I cannot ignore the 1-pointer. <laughs> oh, this is annoying. But I can't, I can't, what is it, he can't lose HP or target? I think it's just target, right? And I don't have multi-arrow to get around that. Where am I looking at? Wrong one. Only target. We can't... Uh, yeah, okay, whatever. This guy goes at five. Man, this is the worst. All right, let's go roll a die. Uh, three. Oh, my. That's not good. This is, like, the worst. I shouldn't have went for another encounter. Uh, rusty Optics. <laughs> Get split back a plan. Yeah, but on that split turn, I'd have to eliminate this guy before... Because split is... Uh, you still just change your target. So I can't use it on the guy unless this guy is down to one health or less. Split. Select a new target after applying at least one die to Gilly's initial target this turn. Yeah, so you can't do it. It's the, the multi-hero that's what we need. Now, this guy I don't think can target him either, right? I don't know how these guys work if they have targets. I think they do. Yeah, he would have his own target, so I couldn't target the guy. Okay, so this is not looking good. Um, but... We do have unlimited decks. Unlimited decks. All right. All right. Uh, okay. Unlimited decks. Tyrant dice, pointless right now. Unless I move up and use them. Oh, this die. Let's roll the snare. Oh, red bone on the snare, too. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, these guys go first, too. Oh, this is so bad. Ah, two. 
off the cunning guy. And Owlbear, one. I'll move him down here, two. Then he has no one to inspire. Okay, that's not that bad. Okay. If I move into Owlbear, he'll be inspiring a five-pointer if I don't kill this guy. I smell toast. Looking like it's boon time. No! No, it's not! One dex to move in. I have unlimited dex. We're going to go all in with this craziness. What my plan is, is if I can hit him enough with my four attack dice, and if I can roll this elimination side die, we're good. If not, I heal, but then he rolls four attack dice and he wipes me out. I probably shouldn't do such things, but I don't need Owlbear on the board inspiring another five-pointer. I'm in trouble. And at some point, I'll have to run up on one of them. Maybe this is dumb. Now that I'm talking it out, it seems dumb. I'll also do Rusty Optics. Let's use up the Rusty Optics uh, so that I will jump up in the queue after. I could move in and try to just go crazy on this guy. He's only got six health. I would have to hit him for at least three with those four dice. I don't feel great about that. I don't feel great about that. Mm. Yeah, I don't like the odds either. The other thing is if I get the bleed or the untargetable on here would be great. So the bleed could be an additional damage he gets on his next turn, which could be his last health, maybe. I also get to jump up an initiative. I get a second turn, but I won't be able to attack him because he's terrified. But I could possibly get my uh, Wolverine out, who could do a hit on him also. I'm also rolling the mech leg. Maybe that can use Lure Away to take this guy off the board and bring him back in later. Once again, you use the loot too soon. Wait until you roll. Yeah, that's true. But I'm, I still would want to go before this guy. Because, I mean, I could do split targets if I do wipe this guy out. Yeah, but I... Uh, yeah, I might want this in the Tyrant fight, right? Do I, though? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yeah, that's a good call. Good call. Good call. You were correct, John. You can kite and roll four attack dice. Yeah, that would be the safer option. If I do that, I could like run all the way up here. Mm. Splitting would be a great option. Splitting would be great. So if I move away, though, I can't use these dice. And that's okay. That's okay. I mean, I could use this die. I could use both of them still, and if I get the results to heal or whatever. But I think I want to use this Tyrant die as like an auto-kill on somebody. Maybe not if you can't attack. Uh, it's more likely to get a bleed. Three out of four. Oh, okay, if you attack some armor at least... Hmm. It is freaking owl bear though. <laughs> I'm just worried like this guy is going to stick around. Like he won't be the strongest. So when I kill this guy, the next guy comes in. This guy's annoyingly rolling two attack dice on me. This guy's going to be the end of me right here. And I can't target him. I can't target him with the bleed. I can't target him with this attack. Hmm. Splitting targets, though. But it doesn't work. I need to get this guy down further. 
Okay, I'm just gonna roll all this stuff and see what it is and make some decisions. Move in, roll everything, hope for split. Ah, but then I, I'm right there and I get smashed for four attack dice. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna be a chicken. I'm gonna be a chicken. I I don't trust the dice enough to do three damage to this guy, and or get me broadhead or whatever. Uh, I know I could use Rusty Optics to get a second shot, but then I'm terrified, so I don't get to hit him again. But I could just run away, but... Alright, I'll fire from here. It's my only hope. Uh... But then he rolls four attack dice, but I could go before him. I just worry the terrify, like I won't get to attack him again, but then I run away at that point. But then I'll have three baddies on the board. Who knows what the other five pointer is? It could be one of those mischief guys uh, or the uh, goblins that comes in and starts signaling every round. <laughs> oh my god! I don't even know if I'm making it through round round two here, and I have to survive to round six. <laughs> this is suspenseful, I know. I need to eliminate him, I agree, because he'll be inspiring. And that's very bad. No, I'm going to go from here. Let's do it. Okay, so if I did run into him, it would have been awesome. Because I did roll uh, five uh, hits. Uh, it does still hit him enough to take him one down. But then I can't use these two tyrant dice because they need a target... That is melee, I think. So they're not a ranged kind of thing. It's not only a game, David. This is life or death. <laughs> this determines whether we have more episodes of this campaign. So it's serious business here. <laughs> this is no time for jokes. All right. Uh, Wolverine, thanks for not showing up again. He knows what he's doing. Can a split work, though? Hold on, hold on. I have it. I have it. No, watch. I think I have this. So if I take, hold on, this was a bone. If I take the Wolverine as a bone, I have split targets. So I apply all of my dice and I think I can split. Yes, I can choose a new target. So I hit this guy down to uh, one, okay? I, I apply the five attack, right? He goes down to one. Then I use split targets. I spend the bone from the Wolverine. I save mech leg, I don't use it, okay? So this is what I'm gonna do. Uh, if it doesn't make sense, I'll, I'll roll back. But I take five health off this guy, put him down to one. Now they're tied, who's the strongest, okay? So these attack dice are spent, okay? Let's just say that. Now I have a new target. I spend these two bones, they're exhausted. Hi, target. Then this guy, I could just crush with this. Or I could just put a bleed on him and he dies at the start of his next turn. Use mech leg, not yeti. I don't know though. I want that mech leg for the final fight. But again, this is a long fight. I'll probably get more bones. But I'll probably be wanting using bones for lure away or broadhead. So I don't feel I'll get that mech leg back. And I kind of want that mech leg for the final fight. The yeti, I, I'm not, I don't have faith in this yeti. But yes, he could help keep me alive and be a target. Ah, uh, yeah, you're right. Uh, he could be a target if I could actually get him. So let's do the mech leg. Sure, that makes sense. Uh, and we'll bleed this guy. I won't use this die. This die will stay. And where is this bleed? This all should check out. Because he's now the strongest, I can say, right? Oh, is it the strongest unit or strongest baddie? Strongest baddie, right? Yeah, baddie, of course. Yeah, that would be rough if uh, it had to be you at less health. Yeah, what was I thinking? Okay. There we go. Dusters die. Put in some bleed. I'm going to stay where I am on the queue. Uh, I get terrified because I attacked a... Uh, Owlbear. So I can't attack him for a couple rounds. 
I don't think I use rusty optics either. Yeah, let's not use rusty optics. Five pointer coming in at the end of round one. Yeah, save optics. Okay, yeah, so I'm thinking. Okay, let's bring this guy to the end of the round. <laughs> Jeez Louise. Uh, the Manticore. Poison 2, Rage. Six health, going in lane three, bottom of the queue, getting inspired so he would get an attack die also. But I do go before him. Okay, purpley guy, poison, see ya. Oh! Yeah, this still happens. He can't be targeted, but the poison works, yes. Or the bleed works, bleed works, yes. I had a brain fart for a minute. Uh, boom, he's gone. Okay, cunning, see ya, bro. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's not he can't take damage, it's just he can't be targeted. I don't know why I can never get that straight. Okay. Owlbear. Uh, let's go. One, two. Gilly with unlimited decks. And terrified. I can't attack this guy. But oh, you betcha I'm going to attack this guy. Yeti. Four attack. That's it, right? That's it. My stats suck. <laughs> oh my god uh, oh yeah this is round two thank you <laughs> yeah we need to get to round, end of round six or is it start of round six what does it say if you remain on the battle mat after six rounds so yeah end of round six so we gotta get through one fatigue round two so we're still gonna see two more five pointers <laughs> okay let's hopefully just eliminate this guy and then it gives us breathing room so we can kill this guy next turn. Uh, okay, I think we're actually good because we got the skull, uh, axe body flay, whatever, and we're doing four damage. So one, two, three, four. And then we can spend the tyrant die to finish him off. Pew! Done. See ya, bro. See ya. Uh, and we... Oh, we got the best Wolverine side. Urgh, finally. After I kill a few of the five-pointers or, or kill a few of the baddies, he decides to show up. And he's in his in his best state. Let's flip him to the, flip him to the angry side. Yeah, he's mad. Uh, and he will go... I mean, I don't want to put him in harm's way. yet but who will come in he dies and it'll be somebody coming in at lane one yeah i'll just put him there whatever uh terrify makes it so i can't attack any baddies for the, my next turn that have terrify even if it's not the guy originally attacked so this goes away at the end of my turn so it's gone so now i can target this guy again but it just stops you from attacking like terrify guys like every round you can only attack them like every other round but it counts for all guys with Terrify. So if there were like three on the board and I hit one, I become Terrified and now I can't attack any of them until I go through another full turn. At least that's how I remember it, but I might be wrong. <laughs> He's a wimp. Only shows when no baddies around. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, all right. So that was me. Uh, round three begins. So end of round three, we'll get a five pointer. Not right now. This guy goes one, two, nothing. Uh, Yeti, he will move up and he'll take out Owlbear with a one shot. Pew. Although, that prevents me from rolling a bunch of attack dice and building up bones. 
But at this point, I feel okay about that. And then I don't take Terrify, and if the next guy comes out as Terrify, I don't have to worry. Because it would suck if you get Terrify, then we draw the next baddie, and he's a Terrify baddie. Then I can't attack him next turn. Yeah, I'll just take out the Albear now. I mean, it might not be the best case. It might be better to roll attack dice. I only need to apply one. If I get some bones, it helps get me set up for the next guy. But this is okay. I don't need to waste X uh, for this guy. And I have nothing to roll. All right. Uh, do I want to move, though? This guy's coming in here. Yeah, sure. Unlimited decks, awesome sauce. Okay, uh, round f end of round three, new five pointer. Oh, it's our Griffin Howler buddy with dive flight signal one. So if he gets a chance to go, he is gonna put a one pointer in the queue also. Five health, lane one, melee position, bottom of the queue. Dive and flight. So if he does get to fly on his next round, he'll dive to any adjacent spot to the weakest uh, unit on the board, my, or unit, uh, opposing unit on the board, my choice. So round four. Yeti. Hits him for one. He's down to four. Now it's my turn to go in for the kill. Four dice. That's all I got. I'm not going to move. Uh, yeah, let's just hit him for four. Hopefully we take him out. He's got four health. Uh, we hit for six and a bone. Twos on three of the dice. That's crazy. Uh, yeah, so we just blow this guy up. Pew! Done. Okay. Hopefully we can get to a third bone. That would be nice. Okay, uh, end round four, nothing. Round five... Nobody, end of round five, a new five pointer. And our final contestant is, I knew it. I knew these guys would show up eventually with the stupid signal. <laughs> but we survive as long as we get to the end. Oh, this is end of round five. Yeah, so this guy comes in. Terrify, if the unit has terrified, die. At the start of the next turn may not target baddies with the skill terrified. Yes. Uh, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. He's going in range position lane one. Lane one. Six health. Uh, going to the bottom of the queue. Doesn't matter what his die is really, but. Okay. Uh, we start fatigue round six. Lose a health. Lose a health. Lose a health. I'm down to four. Ooh. Okay. Yeti. He's going to move in. Hit for one. This guy's down to four. And I want to take him out so he doesn't signal, but I guess it doesn't really matter in this situation. Uh, yeah. I want bones though, but I don't think I'll get there. Maybe we'll get two bones out of this, but and hit for twos or, or a two. Uh, we get one bone uh, and three attack. That doesn't kill him, and I have no other way to do any more damage. Okay, uh, then this guy will go one attack. He's attacking the weakest, so he's attacking the Yeti. One attack, two defense, signal one. So we get a one pointer in the queue. Uh, he gets a defense, hits the Yeti for one. He's hardy anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, we made it to the end of the round. End of the round, this guy technically comes out. But I don't know in what order what happens, but bottom of the queue. Uh, and then it says counter success is achieved if you remain on the battle mat after six rounds. Done. Done. So we win, right? I think we're good. I have four health left. Uh, yeah, I don't know where these guys go because they weren't defeated, but I think it's only if you lose, they go to, 
Yeah, this is tough. I think they just go to the bottom of their stacks. I don't think it matters really in this situation, but they weren't defeated. But I think it's only if you lose. But I won, so I think they're defeated. Yeah. I don't know, whatever. Okay. Uh, yes, David, we're playing with the 40 Days of Daylor expansion. Yes, that's what I think this came from. Yeah, this uh, encounter we're doing right here, this super annoying the break is a lie, uh, is from 40 Days of Daylor. <laughs> and so was that cunning guy that we just had, that uh, ranged one point baddie. And the troll brewmaster we had earlier. Yeah, it's all, yeah, lots of 40 Days stuff happening here. Um, I don't think I would play, I, I don't know if I would play through solo Age of Tyranny without the 40 days giving you those extra solo encounters. It would get real boring drawing from the same 12 encounters uh, over and over. And yeah, it's just, we get kind of predictable and boring a little bit. So the fact that we have double that amount, I think we have 24 to choose from or something like that, uh, is great. <clears throat> And that's why I can't keep remembering coming, or cunning, cunning. I keep forgetting cunning uh, and callous. I get them mixed because I don't, I, I haven't had 40 days, like I haven't played with it that much. Uh, and I forget some of those abilities. I've like very much bonded with the abilities in the base set uh, baddies and even, uh, even undertow a little more, I think. But the 40 days guys like throw me off sometimes. Yeah, aggravated, bribable. Yeah, all these I always have to look up every time. I just keep forgetting. I just need to play with them more. And when I play with with Undertow, I don't mix in the 40 day guys usually at this point. I, I should start doing that. But I know some of the some of the skills cross over. And Bernardo usually plays double gearlock when playing solo. Yeah, so you wouldn't I wanted to do this true solo, but yes, uh, Bernardo is, is correct. I probably would. If I didn't have 40 days, I would play with two gearlocks so you can use the the um, 30 or whatever, 29 or whatever it is, uh, general encounters to go with. Uh, so you have some more options in the 40 days. And Ryan's here. Hello. Hello. I play with it all every time. I still have to look it all up. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I, I could see that. Even no matter how many times I play it, I'll, I'll still never remember all the skills. And Ryan understands this completely. Uh, then you mix in uh, Cloudspire. You go to Cloudspire and you try to remember all those skills and talents and whatever. And then you come back to too many bones and you're trying to remember them. And then they just start all... I know they're all worded different, but it's like, it just messes with you if you jump between Cloudspire and Too Many Bones too often, uh, which I've done in the past. And uh, yeah, it's a little weird. Uh, okay, so, oh, we get a Trove Loot. <laughs> right before the boss, this is stupid. Uh, okay, so Trove Loot and a Training Point. Oh, and John says look at them. Okay, I don't feel that dumb then, but yeah. It's a lot to remember. That's that's why the that's where the complexity comes from. I think to this game is is knowing all those and, and knowing how to plan for them and prepare for them. Uh, it's just a lot to remember. Okay, uh, trove loot. Three three three. I'm sure sure some of you know what this actually is if you played a lot. I don't remember what that one is, but if I take it, I gotta throw away rusty optics, and then we start working on opening it. There's a chance I could open it now, but probably won't. Then I'm maybe could carry it forward to the next playthrough. Maybe not. Maybe I don't. What do you guys want me to do? Keep the troll loot and start working on it, or I just throw it away and, and keep the rusty optics for the, the tyrant fight to have the ability if I'm I roll bad on initiative that I could get above uh, Drellin, who is Drellin's a five. And the bog types, I feel like some of them are fours, twos. Toss it, yeah, okay. I just, yeah, I would toss it too. Um, but yeah, if you guys are like, I wanna see it, and we haven't had troll loot that much in the playthrough, so I feel bad, but it's just how it goes sometimes. But yeah, more efficiently play, throw it away, but more fun entertainment, keep it, but imagine when I opened it, it was like super amazing. Seldom use trove loot, toss it, you need optics, yes. <laughs> I do. <laughs> John is the word of words of wisdom over here. Ryan's in a cloud spire turning right now. I've had so much rules overload. Oh, I can only imagine. I'm excited to get that streamlined like rules update stuff for cloud spire. Now it makes me not want to touch it until we get that stuff. Cause I want to see what they did. I, I added it to my, my pledge manager. Like, like as soon as I saw it was an option, first thing I added was that, that update pack 
And then now I hear it's even better. They're going to give us like 49 chips or something to replace the game, to throw in the base game. I don't know if it, if it updates stuff for... Um, I don't know if it updates stuff for the Portal Seekers expansion, but I don't have that expansion yet. So honestly, not that much. Oh, okay. Trove loot is better for three or more players. Yeah, that's true. I can, I can totally agree with that. Yeah. Yeah, includes the chips now too. Yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. These guys do awesome stuff like that. That's why I love chip theory games. And why I support them and why I, I like have no problem showcasing their games over and over again on the channel. A, I'm having a blast with them. I love playing them. But they're always they're always awesome. They they're a customer first company and they're, they're great for that. I threw the kitchen sink on the last chip theory. Threw the kitchen sink on the last chip theory and got all too many bones except promos. Now I'm thinking of Hoplomachus. Hoplomachus, uh, I don't know what the status is on that. I did they not they I don't think they had any of that stuff in the pledge manager. And I'm not sure, are they are they going to keep printing Hoplomachus, or are they kind of giving up on it? I don't know, but I'm not sure if they're doing another print run of Hoplomachus. That's my fear. And I don't have any Hoplomachus, and I kind of wish I grabbed some of it when I had the chance, but then again, it doesn't seem like that popular of a game, so I could probably spend those hundreds and hundreds of dollars on other stuff. It is out of print right now. Yeah. And I feel with Cloud Spire and Too Many Bones, I have way more than enough replayability with Poker Chips and Neoprene Mats and awesome gameplay that I'm not sure I need a third game that kind of fits that same niche. That's the other problem too. And they keep pumping out content for those other two games. And if Hoplomachus is kind of like, they're done with it, then I don't know. But nothing wrong with it. I, I would, yeah, I wouldn't be opposed to owning it, but. Okay, we'll see. We'll see what they do. I wouldn't be surprised if they, they redo Hoplomachus. Come out with like a Hoplomachus 2.0 kind of like uh, set. Hey, Sean. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they came out with like just a Hoplomachus like 2.0. Refresh it, better artwork, better graphic design. Use some of their new printing. Like like Cloud Spire and Too Many Bones look night and day better than, than Hoplomachus on the table. And I know with now what they've learned, they could make Hoplomachus look a lot better. Uh, and probably streamline some stuff maybe too. But maybe they do that where they come out with like a, a point a 2.0 kind of like intro set kind of thing. Yeah, John. Oh, okay, John says the same thing. I would have tried if it was in the Pledge Manager, but not a major interest. I probably would have added uh, some of the Hoplomachus stuff if it was in the Pledge Manager too. But the fact that they didn't put it in there is kind of like a sign that they're not really, uh, not really gung-ho about doing another print run of that. I just don't think the interest is there. Anyways, uh, okay. Yeah, I would get worried when a company just doesn't want to print or promote an older product, they may either A, give up on it forever, or B, they might be in the works to like redo it. Then I get hesitant on spending money on the older version if some new shiny version is going to come soon anyway. So that's only my fear, but I don't think they sell a lot of that game. So financially they might be kind of deciding like it's just kind of like a waste when they can't even keep too many bones and like Cloud Spire in stock all the time. They might as well use the factory capacity, shipping, their money, all that stuff into those two games that people want more of. It just makes sense to spend all your time and effort on that. Okay, so training point. What am I taking for a training point? Back to our regular scheduled program here. Regular scheduled programming. Sean says, question. Have you done the campaign in Too Many Bones with Mel? Yeah, we did it three player. Uh, oh, no, we didn't do it just two player. We've only done it three player and now one player. I've never tried it just two. I think Mel and I might have played to try it out before we started on the stream like when we or when we did the, that video series but i don't know maybe we didn't i don't remember but anyways yeah i'm not sure how it feels two player but it would probably be more interesting than solo because solo i keep seeing the same encounters over and over again even though i have the expansion in there but oh lost cities yeah yeah all right let's get back to it uh so training points Training point. Let's see what we got here. Uh, Mech leg's gone. These two. 
Training point. I have seven health. I'm rolling four attack. Drellin. We're going to have a Drellin fight next with two bog type baddies. We know one of them won't be a clay golem, but I have a feeling one of them will. Or we might have bog frogs. We could see another bog ribbits. I don't know. So this guy comes in slapping poison all over the place. Hopefully we can wove and snare this guy. I can scout too before this to see and help with what bog types we find, maybe. Oh yeah, Sacabra is correct. Chip3 Games is working on that new game that's been teased in several of the recent videos. Game board is in the shot. Yeah, it looks like uh, they might be doing what I said. This is my, if you, you can go back and see on an old stream of Too Many Bones, one of my first streams ever, I think, after I got Cloudspire. And I'm surprised if, if this exists, please tell me. But there is, I remember talking about it on a stream, uh, and I, I said, I wish, like, Too Many Bones is like a tactical little fight. But I wish I could take these gear locks and go through an adventure style game with like maps that are like picture the cloud spire terrain pieces and I build a map with those and I'm going on a quest fighting guys along the way getting uh, encounters like this I'm, I'm defeating bosses uh, and it could zoom into like this kind of fight but I pictured like an overworld adventure using cloud spire similar uh, map tiles uh, where you can go along and there's like you know a castle at the end of boss fight I know it's not much different than this but I feel like I would like a bigger, more like, um, I don't know, something more like, a, more epic and larger than these like constant little fights on here. And it would add more variety if you fought sometimes on that overworld where there would be more like obstacles in the way and paths and maybe terrain types and that kind of stuff. But now that I played Mage Knight, it kind of makes me think of that. Uh, but I didn't play that at the time. But I was thinking of a way to turn these gear locks into more of an adventure type game on a bigger boards, not just fighting on this little map. Uh, that's what I thought would be awesome, but I still love too many bones, but this is what I, th I, th I remember I rambled on about that was like, man, wouldn't it be awesome if you took these guys on like a uh, actual adventure, not like an abstract adventure, you know? Uh, so they could be working on that. Some expansion for too many bones that turns this into like some kind of crazy thing. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Matthew has a question. I have a question. What happens if you kill the one BQ? You reshuffle all? Yes. Yes, you reshuffle. Yeah. If this all emptied, any of these emptied, you just reshuffle what's defeated back in. But Chip Theory could be working on something completely new. But then again, remember, too many bones is their bread and butter. So they got to feed that beast. Keep their company going. You can't always just do experimental stuff. But yeah, as long as too many bones is selling well... They're good, and then they can experiment still, but yeah, we'll see, we'll see. We'll see, they could come out with awesome stuff. I don't know, I'm curious, but if it's some kind of adventure expansion for Too Many Bones, I called it like uh, months ago, <laughs> last year in the fall sometime, I think, or, or late summer, I, I, I said that would be cool, but I'm no good, but I'm surprised no fan expansion, I'm surprised a fan expansion doesn't exist that does that. Uh, is where I was going with that. But that would be super cool. It would be more of a table hog though. <laughs> so we're doing woven snare where this guy is. That's for sure. Uh, let's scout our ones. Uh, so we're not gonna, even going to get this guy. So it doesn't really matter what I do with him. Uh, but I'll put him into the back. And we'll scout the next guy. So again, we're not seeing any bogs here. So I'm not really uh, influencing what happens in this battle. That's fine. Okay. Uh, so let's just get our bogs. Ah, Clay Golem. <laughs> he is going on lane two. And Bog Frog. Lane three. We'll just throw that guy back in there.
Okay. Uh, three. And we'll set this guy up. Lean two. Uh, five. Why is this guy in here? He should not be in there. Five, two, and three. Cue the Rocky music. <laughs> oh, I forgot to get my training points. Oh, I'm so I'm skipping ahead. Oh my god. I'm getting all distracted. We're talking off topic here. Sort of off topic, not really. Uh, okay, sorry. I shouldn't have looked at what those were. Uh, I don't know. Health or a dex? Defense? What do you guys want? No, it's not coffee. Let's just get this stream done. So I can I can go. I got other stuff I, I'm working on also. <laughs> You're the best around. <laughs> I don't train, bro. Did you even train, bro? I didn't train, bro. Do you even train? Uh, so multi arrow and dex. Uh, I only get one training point. This is another reason why I'm not that worried about it. It's just one, one training point. It's like, I don't think it's going to make the big difference. I think either health would be big or a dex. Defense could be interesting. Could help me get to bones and broadhead and stuff. It could work against the clay golem hitting me for one. This guy might get nerfed. I don't know. I have a feeling this will miss. Uh, defense? Defense it is. But five dex. Oh, it's so weak. But I could keep rolling it. So let's just do a defense. All right. You guys want it? That's what we're going with. We'll go with the defense. Sure. Uh, okay. Oh, so this one's gone. Uh, we're going to do recovery. We're going to heal back up to our seven health. I have no healing loot. This is crazy. Oh, well. Playthrough might end here. <laughs> what do we got? Defense. Oh, now there's more boats. All right. Let's see. Yeah, break does suck. That's why I was worried. I wanted this guy not to happen. I called it right from the beginning when we drew the tyrant that this would be the worst thing. So we got a dex, a dex. I see a defense, a defense. Anything else? A John. Oh, John now says defense. Defense, defense, defense. Dex. Okay, defense it is. Defense it is. No mech leg. Oh, this is so bad. This is so bad. Okay, let's roll our die and see where we go. Five. All right. I like that. Five. I'll take it. That is good luck. I think here. And hopefully we get the Wolverine out to distract the clay golem. Serenity now. Insanity later. Yeah, the moral acts for the golem. True. We can poison the boss. Or not poison, bleed the boss with the dagger. It would be nice to get Duster's dagger on the side I can put up here. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Love that act. I love that snare. Not. <laughs> oh, the snare is killing me. Okay. <laughs> All right. So he's going to be rolling three attack dice, two defense, and his tyrant die, which we need over here. One chance. This could be the end of the campaign here. Let's see how we do it. It's a bone snare. Yeah, it's just like a free bone. Before we even start the fight, it's great. Hello, Stefan. Okay, let's go. Gilly. I think we need this guy to work. Please, please, Wolverine, please show up. Defense die. Three attack. Or, or am I just... Uh, I think we'll kite this guy. I might need more attack on this guy. 
But the Wolverine could help us with the break guy, take him out a little bit. He also distracts. But I'm going to miss on this stupid Wolverine, I know it. Okay, we're going with this. I, I want to roll four attack dice though, just to try to take this guy out. But I think we have time, like he's not going to get to us yet. But I don't need him putting poison dice on us, and then this guy turning them to threes. Don't need that, no thank you. Yeah, hopefully we just roll some good. Wolverine needs to get Golem to three or lower it and then axe him. I agree. What is his encounter thing? Move cost two. Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Where is this encounter? Oh, over here. <laughs> I forgot to read the rules. So Drellin is in lane one. We put bog type baddies. We put them in two and three. Party of one to one pointers. Okay. Battle queue. We ignore it. Each move position on this battle, in this battle, requires two decks instead of one. So, again, kiting becomes harder. We're in a swamp. If any bog-type baddies are on the battle mat, he can't lose HP. So, Drellin will not lose any HP and poison. You can't poison him. He will be rolling a Tyrant die. He'll be trying to change it to a three or place a poison two effect die on his targets. So, he needs to be targeting you. So he could target my little hardy guy. He can target me and my uh, little wolverine because he can target two people if he's beside us. Yeah, buy Nugget or Gilly uh, as your next. If you buy too many bones in Undertow, let's say buy Corset and Undertow, I would recommend getting another gear lock like Nugget or Gilly. And then I would get something like 40 Days or if you want a campaign, get Age of Tyranny. But look into those gear locks. Make sure you like them. But Gilly and Nugget are great for solo. They're very well rounded. You can tell they were designed for solo play. As you can see here. We've made it to day five of our campaign. Pretty easily most way, most of the way too. We've yet to even see a boon. And we're playing on legendary mode or whatever. So Gilly is proven to be good in solo. The driver may be not so good. but <laughs> Alright, here we go. Uh, target is Bogfrog. Okay, we got the Wolverine, not the best side. We didn't get a defense, but we got a uh, bone. Three attack, puts this guy down to one health left. And Wolverine, do I take this Wolverine? Two health, is that enough? Do I need him there? I think I need him there. But I don't think he would survive. He's not gonna survive a round. He's not even gonna survive a round, this guy. I needed the side with three on it. Then again, he might not even survive anyway because he, even with three health, because of Drellin throwing a poison on him possibly, he might not survive. Um, wait on the Yeti? Yeah. The only thing the Yeti would prevent is this clay golem from hitting me, but I can move Drellin down to here and then move the clay golem in front to help keep Drellin away from me. Yeah, I think I want to wait on the Yeti. Stupid Yeti. Even, yeah, even the three health side on the Yeti might not stick around. A broadhead could help us get rid of this guy also. Or saving a broadhead for the tyrant would also be nice. Okay. Think of the moves. Good morning, Meeple Monkey. Hello. Thank you for, again for becoming a Patreon last night during our stream. We got your notifications. And thanks for your donations. We appreciate the support. I also saw you join the Discord, but I've been pretty busy lately uh, editing other videos I've been working on. I'm going to jump in there, but yes, welcome. Thank you so much. Awesome. All right. So, uh, Tyrant. One, two. He rolls two defense. And his Tyrant die is pointless to roll. Uh, but he does get three defense. Wow. Uh, this guy will go one, two. And this guy will go one, two. And he'll roll one attack. Uh, he hits me for one. So I'm down to six health. Round two. Gilly. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I yeah, the golem is my shield. <laughs> this is true. I don't need a yeti, I have the golem for that. <laughs> okay. I 
I think I target the frog. Uh, two, four. Hmm. We're going after Drellin. Drellin Paleface. Mr. Bog Ruler. That's what we're trying to take down. Oh, I don't miss those days waking up with a wet bed or a kid that's crying or screaming in the middle of the night. Yeah, not fun. Not fun. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. Part of me is wanting to move, but then moving doesn't really change much. I'm just worried about getting trapped with Drellin here and not being able to get the Clay Golem out of my way. I don't need them both pounding on me. But again, movement is two decks a pop. But I could still move and roll one die on this, this Bog Frog and probably still be okay and hopefully kill him. Or I'd just move one space, but then the one space keeps me in range so Drellin can move up and still hit me. So I would need to move two. But that leaves me only one dex left. I also could not move, try to get the Yeti out at this point, try to put him in the way so then I don't get trapped. Keep put him over here. He helps me start working on these guys. Seems like a bad winner to me. Oh no. And <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Trellin. <laughs> yes, Trellin seems like a bad winner. All right. Uh, I'm going to stay where I am. I will just try to roll a bunch of dice. Hopefully, get some bones to get a broadhead lined up. Take out this clay golem. Or, yeah, we'll see. Because I can't hit Drellin. I can knock away his damage, but I can't have him lose HP. But I, I mean, there's no point in that. Four attack, Yeti, Let's see what we get. Yep, Yeti and attack. And we're targeting the Bog Frog. Okay, we hit the Bog Frog for five. I don't think I want to split targets and exhaust dice at this point. No, I don't think so, but we didn't get any bones there. I was hoping for some bones. So we definitely take this guy out. Unless I don't want to. But I feel like that's a good call. I don't need to be poisoned. Uh, the Yeti, we got the side with the upkeep, two health, and one attack still. And I just want to check. Uh, where is this guy? Yeah, there's two sides with three health, one with upkeep, one with not. But I still think I take him now. But again, he won't survive all the way around. Which sucks. If I don't apply the Yeti. No, I need to apply the Yeti so I can keep kiting. So I can start a kite on Drellin. But yeah, I think I'll throw the Yeti out. I just don't feel good about it. But put him diagonally. And I won't have to spend a dex to keep him around at least. Okay, good. Drellin. He'll just move up one. And he's going to attack the Yeti. Yeah, it's a tough call, but I just don't want Drellin being right here. And then how am I kiting him? I'm not going to be able to get this clay golem out of the way. I don't think I'll get to my broadhead. I wish I had that extra mech leg in this battle. It really sucks. I really wish I didn't use that last battle. Okay. So he got Poison Enhancer, so there's no Poison on our Yeti, so he's not going to change that to Poison 3 or whatever. He hits for 3, but the Yeti has a Hardy. I mean, maybe the Clay Golem will roll a miss. That's the only thing that could keep the Yeti around. Maybe he could do an extra hit for us on the Clay Golem. Uh, Clay Golem. Oh, Clay Golem is actually hitting us. I forgot about that. If I stay here, he hits us, because he's actually attacking the strongest. Yes, so little Yeti stays around because he didn't get poisoned. Okay, that's not bad. Uh, round three, little Yeti's turn. He's going to attack the Clay Golem and stay where he is. Now my turn. I have to spend a dex if I want to keep him on the board at the start of my turn. 
I feel like that's a yes. So I have four. Oh, this clay golem though. Um, I just would need to apply one attack and then I can use tyrant die on him or bleed, actually bleed. Yeah, let's worry about this guy. So one dex, two, three. I'll just roll these. Uh, no, roll a defense, roll a defense and one attack. Because I may be able to pair one attack with the auto kill on the clay golem. Or I throw a bleed on the clay golem, then we play the running game. Or I just stay where I am, have a defense. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Uh, yeah, that's Woven Center in the backup plan. Of course it is. <laughs> Saving bleed for Drellin? I want to roll it now as an option. I may not use it. I may not use it. But yeah, bleed on Drellin would be great. Or the extra attack die with no decks. I need bleed for Drellin. Well, what if I can't take out the clay golem right now? I also can't have a go to fatigue rounds for too long either. Uh. All right. Keep options open. Okay, so a defense. Great. Uh, I got the heal side of the die here, but I could heal too, but I think I want to keep this die and not use it. And I got two attack, which is useless. Useless. Yep, I really I should have rolled this. I so should have rolled that. Yeah, I don't know what I was thinking. Okay, um Yeah, we're not gonna apply anything to the clay golem. Alright. Uh Drellin. He is gonna roll three attack dice and his poison thingy. Uh he will kill the Yeti and try to put poison two on him, whatever. He is gone. Clay golem. Uh We'll roll one attack die on me. One defense gone. Round four. Nugget. I need this guy to leave. This guy's so annoying. But I'm not rolling bones. I missed rolling an attack on one of those rounds. I should or roll the defense I should have rolled to get a bone. Don't want to get trapped in here. I don't have enough decks to get away from Drellin now. This is very, very bad. Very bad. Very, very bad. I needed a th another dex. Yep. Well, we're going to roll. Hope for the best. I don't know. Stupid Drellin could take us out. Could take us out. And lure away is only five. Lure away. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, bleed should give me the edge and fatigue. But again, Drellin has 8 health and I'm at 5 and soon to be lower. I'm just worried about Drellin coming and hitting me right now for 6 dice plus poisoning me. That would be the end of the battle real quick. Real quick. Uh...
Yeah, I can't even kite. This is very bad. Very bad. Uh, okay. One, two, three. Yeah, I needed one more dex for this battle. I, I should have thought about that a little more. Yeah, it should have been dex. Not a defense. Uh, okay. Yeah, I forgot about the two dex rule. That, that definitely you need to be able to move three spaces. Okay. Uh, let's go with these two. Attacking this guy. Okay, I might have my butt saved by an untargetable. Uh, I'm like, yeah. Uh, but I could go untargetable. I can kill the clay golem by applying one damage to him, exhausting that die, and then finishing him with this tyrant die. So I should probably do that. Okay, clay golem, you're gone, bro. You're gone. Okay. So now I can actually maybe have Drill and lose some HP. Uh, I get one defense. Not enough to handle three attack dice hitting me though. Uh, and a poison. No thanks. So I'm going to use this untargetable. Uh, the bleed is not... Uh, no, I won't get that far. Targetable. And there's two... I could switch targets and hit this guy for two taking away a defense, but I feel like that's pointless. I assume since this guy can't target me, he won't move. Is that correct? Or will he move? How does that work? How does that work for baddies? If they're untargetable. Because I know they kind of like pick their target, then move. And if they can't target, I don't think they move. I don't think it moves. Hmm. Moves the closest target and there isn't one. Yeah. Yeah, I think it doesn't move. I'm pretty sure. I heard they go back to their start position. I wish. I wish. I wish. <laughs> uh, okay. So, but he still would roll defense dice. So even if I knocked away one, he still rolls one. That's okay. I'll just let that two go to waste. So we only roll three attack dice going forward. I wish I had the bleed, but I don't. Hopefully we can get up to Broadhead. Okay. Uh, his turn. He just doesn't do anything. It doesn't matter. Round five. Oh, this is so bad. I think he sees a phantom in range three. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go up here, buddy. Go up here. Uh, okay. So let's do round five. Gilly. Can move to here. That doesn't really help me. He still can get to me. So I might as well just stay where I am. I'll move him to here. But then he can still get to me. Yeah, I just I can't kite him. This is this is sad. Uh yeah. Uh, I can only roll three attack. Uh I feel like I need to roll the defense die. Yeah, I just hope I get some bones and get, maybe I can get a fortunate discovery, 
get extra mech leg, roll that on the next turn, get the broadhead. I don't know. That might be dumb to do that, though. I can't roll bones. I can't roll bones. Mm, not enough bones. All right. Uh, we hit him for five. This goes away. One, two, three attack dice, two defense, poison die. He hits for three attack, he gets his three defense back again. He did get poison enhancers, so that does nothing to me, sweet. Uh, he knocks away one, hits me for two health. That's a pretty good roll, I think, for my, my benefit. I'm at three left. Oh, fatigue. I lose one, down to two health. He loses one, down to five health. Okay, this is bad. Mm, yep. Yeah. Looking back, should have never got the Yeti, and should have not done a defense before this fight. <laughs> should have been a health and a dex. That's what those two points should have been. <laughs> yeah, I got to hit Broadhead, but I, like, come on. This, like, I'm not rolling bones. This is very sad. Gilly. Uh, defense. I'm not even using all my decks either. This is so bad. Uh, this is so bad. I need to hit three of these to be bones. Yeah, good luck. I can't run away. Taps being played by other gear locks. Yes. I got two bones. Uh, not three. I can't lure him away. <laughs> so we hit for three we just take away his defense maybe he misses completely but I doubt it all right Drellin boom he hits me for three I'm dead yep I'm dead <laughs> campaign done boom we lost no other chance it's day nine yeah I was worried about the short playthrough not much room for error and yeah, we should have been more careful with the training points, I think. I really think dex and health, it, that like really is not a great call there. Because the health for the poison, but we didn't get poison though. The clay golem, that was, I knew from the start that would be trouble. That was bad having him there because I wasted rounds and couldn't kill him. Yeah, I, I knew it. As soon as we draw this card that last night, I felt very bad in my gut that we were going to have a lot of trouble. Based on what tyrants were left and how short of a playthrough we had and what... Uh, and what loot uh, we were carrying forward and, and the training points. <laughs> yes, that attack limit scar. I'm just glad it wasn't a dex limiting scar. That would have been even worse. Well, I lost the battle. We draw a boon, right? <laughs> All gear locks gain one training point, two loot, and remove a scar. <laughs> that would have been better, actually. I should have probably lost the battle earlier just to get that on purpose. That's another strategy. I, I should have tried to get a boon earlier on purpose. But yeah, ah, it's all good. It's all good. I made it further than I thought I would, to be honest, uh, in a solo campaign play. Because, like, it does hurt to get scars, especially on your loot slots when you have so few and stuff like that. I was basically kind of playing with, like, no loot. It felt like kind of almost the whole playthrough. There were some points where I had, like, heals and stuff that were perfect. But, yeah, you have to give up on a lot of the loot. But, hey, that was awesome. Gilly's spirit is now one with the animals, says David. In fact, their very next day, a random bird went and pooped on Drellin's head. Coincidence? I think not. <laughs> you got the Dex one. Oh yeah, I got the Dex one, but Gilly was immune. Yeah, that was day one. Well, oh, imagine that first scenario or first uh, adventure. That would have been bad. That would have been bad to be have Dex the first t turn. I would have purposely tried to die to get a boon. I would or like uh, purposely lose an encounter to get a boon. At that point, I probably should have done it too for that attack stat. Yeah, I probably should have done that. Man, those scars are rough, though. Adam, how you'll get through your work days? Yeah, I don't know. So I got to cancel the next two episodes or three episodes or what? No, it's two more, right? Yeah, today was five. So there's two more. Yeah, two more tyrants left. Yes, yes. So, hey, we got further than I thought. That's all good. Tonight, we're going to be streaming some Dawn of Peacemakers. Uh, I might stream... Um, yeah, I got some stuff I could stream in replacement of it that I was thinking of. So we'll see. I'll, I'll take a look through that after the stream and, and figure something out. 
Uh, so I may have something to stream tomorrow in the day. We'll see. And your work just got a lot less interesting. But we do have our 24-hour live stream coming up this weekend. I do want to start like looking at the games. The poll closes tomorrow. So I do want to kind of look at which games, the main games you guys picked, and look at the top three to five or whatever, and kind of like figure out if I need to be reading rules, uh, playing them to kind of practice them before the stream. I just don't want to be on a 24-hour stream sitting there reading rules to you guys as we try to figure out games we haven't played in a while. Uh, Janet, Terraforming Mars, I could do solo of that, but only if the package arrives that gets those new player boards that I ordered. I, I ordered them from the Board Game Geek store. They are just coming from the U.S., so they have like the two to four week delay trying to cross the border because of COVID. Um, but I'm not touching to Terraforming Mars until I get those boards. I refuse to play on those poorly thin cardboard, paper stock, slippery mats. No thanks. So once I get those replacement boards in, yes, I'll be streaming some Terraforming Mars solo. That, that game is in timeout until I get those. <laughs> uh, Scythe, I have not solo. That is, oh, I talk about that every week with Mel. I'm like, Mel, I need to play Scythe solo. I haven't tried it out. Uh, I love Scythe. It's one of my favorite games, but I've never played it solo. Uh, that is something I would throw in. That could be, that is one of the ones I was going to think about as an option. Also, I have Viticulture Digital uh, that just came out yesterday or today. Uh, I have that also I have not tried yet, uh, but I was thinking of streaming that possibly if this ended early. Uh, taking a look, I have that for Android. Uh, yeah, I could try. I could try Scythe. I could try Scythe. It's something. It's been on my bucket list to play that solo ever since I realized you could play it solo. I never thought about it when I owned it. I've played Scythe so many times, but never even thought of playing it single player. But I love the solo that's in Viticulture. It's great. I like the solo in like Architects and stuff that use that card play. Uh, and it, I think it's similar to that. So, and David says it's a great solo mode. If not on stream, give it a try for yourself. I'm sure you'll love it. Yeah, okay, stay tuned. Uh, I might schedule it for tomorrow. I just will, I have to like look at it though and like learn it first. Uh, so I don't know if I have time to do that before tonight's stream, but I should, I should. But I do have other stuff to do. I have other videos I got to work on um, and plan and plan for the weekend, but we'll see. I'll look into it. I'll look into it. But yeah, it could be Scythe. It might be some digital video culture. Um, there was something else too. Uh, frig, what was it? I don't remember now. It'll help you. <laughs> yeah, I know you guys will help. I know. But I do want to just make sure the top few games you guys voted on, we just, some of them we haven't played in so long. I just, we'll play them this evening. That's why I'm not scheduling streams uh, for like Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday night. Uh, so that we can just play those games, Mel, myself, Chelsea, whatever. Solo Spirit Island, that could be an option. I think Spirit Island's pretty highly voted for the 24-hour stream too. So playing some of that might help me refresh on the rules. Uh, so that might be a good call too. I also have Mage Knight that I was supposed to play this week, but I bumped it to next week. But then again, I got to read Lost Legion rules and stuff before playing that, so I'll probably leave that for next week, uh, just to, to read up and practice that. Spirit is also good. I know, you guys know, know what's good. Uh, yeah, we'll see, we'll see. I'll look into it. I'll, I'll, I'll take some time this afternoon and take a look at it. We'll see, we'll see. But either way, I'll be back for a stream in... Four and a half hours. Uh, so yeah, so stay tuned for that. I have some other videos that we'll be dropping this week looking at some, um, looking at the Dice Tower actually that we're playing today. Uh, I did a video uh, unboxing this, kind of like looking at it, testing it out, but you guys have seen it tested. Uh, but that I, I have to upload uh, and post. I can post that tomorrow. Uh, but I have some other box inserts and stuff to look at. And I have a cool one, a cool one that I want to do. Hopefully get that up by uh, the end of the week or earlier next week. Your coincidence, yeah. <laughs> Moment of silence for, for Gilly. <laughs> do i own any lacerda games no i don't uh the one is he the guy that designed um what's that one with the criminals uh escape plan is he the designer of escape plan because i almost got that at origins when it came out but then the cost of it scared me away and since i don't own any lacerda games and i know they're pretty complex and they're pretty expensive ah yes so i no i don't own any and that was going to be my first one but then when I went to see it uh, at Gen or, uh, Origins, I think was when it launched, I walked up to the table, I looked at it, I watched it demoed, and then I was like, what's the price? I went over to the booth where they sold it, and I was like, no, no, I can't gamble. I can't gamble on the price like that. I'd have to, I had to wait till uh, reviews had come out and people have played it. And the reviews didn't make it seem too hot, to be honest, in my opinion, but it do that does look like a cool game. Gallerist, I've heard that's like his best one, but I could be wrong on that. 
But yeah, I don't own any. Uh, it's Vincent Lacerda, I think, right? Or is it Vincent Lacerda? I think it's Vincent. No, maybe not. But anyways, I don't own any of his games. But I do need to look into getting one at some point. Ah, uh, gallerist. Yeah, gallerist. Anyways, thanks a lot, everyone, for watching. Thanks for coming along with the ride through the solo campaign. Uh, thanks for thanks to Janet. Uh, big shout out to Janet for reminding me constantly that I, I keep saying I'm going to do it and I just need to do it. So I'm glad I, I got it to the table. Thanks to the Patreons for voting uh, to pick Gilly uh, to play through. I appreciate that. And Terraforming Mars big box Kickstarter starting today. <laughs> there is a Kickstarter starting every 10 minutes, Sacabra. <laughs> I don't know what your point is. Uh, but yeah, the big box. I got to check that out though. So did Castle Panic. Castle Panic uh, Deluxe or whatever launched today. That's another one. I love Castle Panic, but I, I don't know if I'd want to spend like over $100 to play Castle Panic. That's I'm not sure about that, but... <laughs> yes. Ah, that's so fun. All right. Thank you for your time, Rosary. Yes. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Thank you so much for watching live. If you're going to watch this in the future, thanks for playing along, watching along with it. Drop comments below. Uh, let me know your thoughts. But yeah, that was fun. Ah, that was fun. Uh, I love too many bones. I can't wait for Splice and Dice stuff. Hopefully that's coming to the channel at some point in the future. Uh, it is, but yeah, I just can't wait to get it now. This has got me back into too many bones again, and I cannot wait. Thanks a lot for watching, everyone. Stay safe. We'll see you guys in the next stream later tonight. If you're not, uh, it, we'll see you maybe tomorrow or the next day in the daytime. If not, then the 24-hour live stream coming up this weekend. So make sure you stop in at some point for that. Say hi, uh, and we'll see you guys then. Thanks a lot for watching. Stay safe. Bye-bye.